looked at Joe and I said, it's money in a bank. The only thing about it is, I didn't realize that Ford had forgotten it. This is a big game for the Yankees today. They've got to win this because if they lose this one, they'll have to win three at the stadium. And they'd rather come back here feeling all they have to do is win two out of three and then split in St. Louis. So this ball game, as I said, is a big one. At any rate, Joe Christopher and I will be back with a wrap-up of the game for Tilden for Breaks and Monroe. The World Series warm-up has been brought to you by Paragon, makers of ChemFlow, the paint with the invisible plastic shield. For Joe Christopher, this is Bill Mazur. See you right after the ball game. your wiper blades are dead from exposure to sun and wind and can't stop streaking your windshield. So, when you forget to ask him to slip on a pair of fresh, new Anco blades or refills, is it fair for you to blame him next time a blinding storm reminds you that you both forgot? Whenever you stop at one of the more than 130,000 better gas stations, that proudly display the familiar bright yellow Anco windshield wiper service cabinet. Please remember that the man at the pump can replace or refill your blades in mere seconds. Just ask him to show you. Fresh new exclusive Anco cushionite rubber gives you clear restful vision that gets you there sooner, safer. You're better off always with Anco by Anderson. Listen to Bill Mazur's post-game wrap-up on The Conversation Station, WNBC, AM and FM, New York. Hi, everybody. This is Phil Rizzuto with Joe Garagiola, welcoming you to Bush Stadium, St. Louis, and the second game of the 1964 World Series. Brought to you by... Gillette, maker of the incomparable Gillette stainless steel blade. The world's sharpest, easiest shaving. Number one in sales by far. And the slim adjustable razor. Foamy shaving cream. Light guard deodorant. And sun up aftershave. And by... Chrysler Corporation. Makers of the new 1965... Plymouth. Dodge. Dodge trucks. Chrysler. And Imperial. Today, your host is Plymouth. For your listening pleasure, Gillette and Chrysler will also bring you exclusively on NBC Radio, the 1965 Rose Bowl game. In this way, these companies wish to thank you for your support. Well, Joe and I are here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, and it's quite a reversal of form for the weather. We had no indication it was going to be like it is today. Quite cloudy, the wind close to 20 miles per hour, and today out of the northwest. If you remember yesterday, the wind was blowing from first base right on out to left field, carrying those high fly balls and line drives deep to left. Well, today it has switched around and is blowing more from third base out to right field and right center field. The balls will still carry quite well today, but not to left field as they did yesterday. It is very overcast. The temperature is between 55 and 60 degrees. No threat of rain today, though it is very overcast. And uh, before the ball game is over, the temperature is expected to get down into the low 50s. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. The second game of the 1964 World Series is being brought to you from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Well, the Yankees have a winner again this fall, and so does Gillette. It's the Gillette World Series special, and here's the deal. You get 12 sensational Gillette stainless steel blades for only $1.50. You save 28 cents. Now, this means weeks and weeks of quick, easy shaves and downright comfort almost beyond the telling. If you haven't discovered the Gillette stainless for yourself, you'll find out after one stroke why it's the number one seller by far. Gillette guarantees you the best first shave of your life and more superbly comfortable shaves per blade than with any other blade or your money back from Gillette. And you can depend on it blade after blade, dispenser after dispenser, because Gillette offers uniformity unmatched by any other blade. Save now. Get 12 Gillette stainless steel blades for only $1.50 
and find out what real shaving luxury is. Well, as you all know by now, the uh, St. Louis Cardinals defeated the Yankees in the first game of the World Series 9-5 to yesterday. And as Joe Garagiola told you, <clears throat> this is a hitter's ballpark. And the hits were far flying fast and furious. Each team came up with 12 base hits. But the Yankees left 11 men on base, while the Cardinals left just 7 men on base. And there was the uh, story in a nutshell. The uh, Yankee long ball was taken care of by Tommy Tresh, who had a two-run home run. But the Cardinals got a surprise when young Mike Shannon hit one of the longest home runs ever hit here at Bush Stadium atop the scoreboard with Ken Boyer on base to tie up the ball game. The crowd yesterday was 30,805, and that's just about capacity here at Bush Stadium. The Yankees, as Joe and I were talking to them down in the field, have uh, gained a little more respect for this Cardinal ball team because not only do they look like they can hit that ball, but they haven't seen anything on the base pass like Lou Brock, Kurt Flood, Mike Shannon, even Ken Boyer since the old go-go Chicago White Sox. And, of course, Yogi Berra realizes now with the first game under the belt of the St. Louis Cardinals, which is always a big game in any World Series play to get that jump on the opposition, the Yankees now have to go out and beat the Cardinals. The uh, favorite for the first game, of course, was Whitey Ford and the Yankees pitching against Ray Sadecki. And Sadecki hung in there. As a matter of fact, there were quite a few times when it looked like one more base hit or base on balls, and Sadecki would be out of there. And uh, the Sadecki and the Cardinals were able to get them out of there. And today, pitching for the Yankees, it'll be their sensational young rookie, Mel Stottlemyre. And without Stottlemyre, Yogi Berra is one of the first to admit the Yankees would not be in this 1964 pennant race. The youngster was called up from Richmond, where he had won 13 and lost three, led the league in earned run average, and he was only there a half year. And to show you how great he was, he was named the International League's most valuable player of the year. For the Cardinals, it'll be Big Bob Gibson, fireball of throwing right-hander, who uh, won the uh, pennant clincher for the Cardinals after losing on Friday night one to nothing. Came back in relief to win the ball game, and uh, since the All-Star break, Gibson has been real red hot. So we've got two real red hot pitches on the mound today: Stottlemyre for the Yankees, and Gibson for the Cardinals. Now, yesterday I was mentioning to uh, Joe Garagiola what I thought was the turning point that went against the Yankees, and that was Lou Brock's great throw, cutting Whitey Ford off at the plate, because right after Ford was thrown out, you had Maris coming up in Mantle, and that would have been, if Whitey had held it third, it had been just one out with the bases loaded and Maris and Mantle coming up. Joe, how did it look to you? Phil, I agree with you 100%, and uh, I'd say the thing that, uh, to me, made that play was uh, Ken Boyer's great decoy. Uh, Ken just standing there... I I tell you, if you hand out Oscars for ballplayers acting it out, uh, he'd have to be the uh, top man so far in this series because I really don't think that uh, Whitey thought there was going to be a play at the plate. And he may have just unconsciously uh, let up. I know I've done it, and I know you've done it. Many times, uh, and now that you bring it up, uh, of course, when you're in spring training, you practice that play if you're an infielder or a catcher. I know many times you must have done it, what they call the dummy play, is stand there with your hands on your side. This was different than Boyer's play. Boyer fake catching the ball, and he did it so well that everybody in the park, including Ford, thought he was going to catch it. The other play that I was speaking of is where you just stand with your hands at your side, and the runner coming in, he figures he doesn't have to slide, and at the last second he catches the ball and tag him out. That's uh, when you got a chance to make a play. Uh, uh, you give them what you call a dummy play. Uh, of course, I think, uh, you know, most catchers fit that play pretty good. Uh, I don't know whether you meant it that way or not. No, Joe, I really didn't. I hope you didn't take it that way. No, Another... that's, all, that's all right, Phil. I am mad. But, uh... Another thing I was talking to the Yankee infielders, Joe, of course, you played here in St. Louis. As a matter of fact, you played on the last World Series team the Cardinals had back in 1946. 46, played the Red Sox. In fact, Mr. Cronin down there, uh, American League president, was the uh, manager then. Yeah, I want to ask you a question about that a little later on, but I want to get back to this infield right now. The Ken Bo uh, Cleet Boyer, Phil Lins, Bobby Richardson, and Pepperdine said they have never played on an infield as hard or as fast as this. It's been that way all year. It's very hard, and uh, it's the old story, uh, and it seems to shock some people for some reason that uh, if you tailor your ball club for your ballpark, 
why not go a step further and tailor your ballpark for your ball club? If you've got guys that can run like a Brock, a Flood, White, Javier, why not make it hard so you can hit that two hopper that they can beat out or get by the infielders? Uh, why not uh, slope the line so that the bunt will stay fair? If you've got a slow infield, uh, let the grass grow high. You remember oh, playing oh, American oh, League. What I about what say, Lane did over there? Oh, man. They let the grass grow and watered it just before each game right in front of home plate so that when the ground balls would hit in front of the plate, they'd slow up. And the infielders had a chance to come up with it. Anytime we had a sinker ball pitcher, I remember Jerry Staley pitching here one year, and they used to put a tarp right in front of home plate. The infield would be baked solid like an unused handball court, and uh, in front of the plate, it would be the Oki Finoki swamp. <laughs> it would slow the ball up, and everybody could make a play. Uh, you remember when the White Sox were uh, had Aparicio and the fellas that could run, how Frank Lane uh, started a half of a Sahara Desert around right. uh, first base, so they couldn't get so the they good couldn't start. Get the jump, that's right. How did you like the infield when you were playing? Well, I tell you, I, almost every infield is different, Joe. Uh, Yankee Stadium, I guess because you play more games there, was perfect for me. I knew where every bad hop was. Cleveland always had a real fine infield. I don't know. The groundskeepers came up with some kind of dirt, and there are certain parks where you would love to say, hit the ball to me. But in this park, I don't think the infielders are saying that. No, I, I, this is very hard, I'll tell you. It, it's one of those parks where uh, if you come in on a bunch, you hope you're covered by enough hospitalization. <laughs> Joe, the question I wanted to ask you was that big controversial play in the 46 World Series where Enos Slaughter scored all the way from first base on, I believe it was a single. Is Harry, that right? Harry Walker, who, by the way, is here in the ballpark, who did such a great job at Jacksonville, uh, he was the hitter. We put a hit-and-run play on, and old Eno took off, and by the time Walker hit the ball, he was about two steps from second base. And Mike Gonzalez was the third base coach. And uh, Eno felt that he was going to score. And you could have put anything in front of him. And Eno would have ran right through it. Uh, there was no go-go or no stop-stop. He didn't see anybody. He was going to score uh, a great piece of base running because he made it. If he doesn't make it, it turns out to be a bad play. But uh, he did it on his own. I know he did. And I, I like what he said. You know, they were trying to put the goat horns on Johnny Pesky for that play. But Slaughter said, you can't blame Pesky. That's one of the most unfair uh, things I've ever heard in the World Series of play, Phil, because uh, you see infielders do it all the time. And there's no way in the world that Pesky uh, could have known what was happening because the ball was hitting his short left center field. It was a case of where he caught the ball, he was going to find the man and throw. And Slaughter just didn't stop. Uh, he was just really moving. Okay, Joe, I'm glad we cleared that up after 18 years. Let's quickly run down the lineups now. The uh, <laughs> managers are down at home plate. Phil Linz leads off at shortstop for New York. Bobby Richardson batting second, playing second base. Center field hitting third, Roger Maris. Mickey Mantle in the cleanup spot in right field. Elston Howard catching, batting fifth. At first base, hitting sixth, Joe Pepitone. Tommy Tresh in left field, batting seventh. Cleet Boyle will be at third base, hitting eighth. And doing the pitching and batting ninth, Mel Stottlemyre. For the Cardinals, it'll be Kurt Flood leading off in center field. Lou Brock batting second in left field. Bill White will be at first base, batting third. Ken Boyer, the cleanup hitter at third base. Dick Grote at shortstop, batting fifth. Tim McCarver, the catcher, batting sixth. Mike Shannon in right field, batting seventh. Dal Maxville at second base, hitting eighth. And Bob Gibson will be pitching and batting ninth. Right now, the color guard marching out to the center of the field. There is a microphone again set up about 20 feet in front of home plate. Phil, I, I haven't seen Stottlemyre as much as you have. I know he's got a good sinker. He's got one of the best sinkers around, uh, Joe. And Yogi Berra likes to pitch him uh, in situations like this where there are short fences and you've got to make them hit the ball on the ground. And uh, he's got good control. He doesn't strike out too many, but he's the kind where you get a lot of double plays. He's not afraid to throw strikes. He seems to be around that play. Right. Good control. Walks very few. Well, everybody is just about ready, standing at attention. And we're waiting for the announcement now. And Rex Davis will now sing our national anthem.
right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. Listen to Bill Mazur's post-game wrap-up on WNBC, AM and FM, New York. Well, the Cardinals are taking the field. The Yankees are getting ready to come to bat. And now the pride of St. Louis and NBC, Joe Garagiola. Thank you very much, Phil. The second game of the 1964 World Series, Bob Gibson, hard-throwing right-hander. Gibson, a fastball, a curveball, a slider. And just to quote the words of his catcher, he says he throws them all just as hard. He doesn't change speeds much. In fact, the word that McCarver uses, he said his pitches are nasty. <laughs> so when a fellow's pitches are nasty, he's got pretty good stuff. Bob Gibson, a good fielder. His fastball from the right-hand hitter to the right-hand hitter will sail. And, of course, a break in to the left-hander. And Stottlemyre, as you heard Phil Rizzuto talking about him, a good sinker ball. When he's got his good control and good stuff, which he's had ever since he came up with the Yankees, he'll pitch down around the knees. So it looks like a lot of work for the Yankee infielders. It'll be Boyer again at uh, third base, Lins at short, Richardson at second, and Pepitone. And the Cardinal infield, the same one that started. Kenny Boyer at third base. Dick Grote is the shortstop. At second base, it's Del Maxville, Bill White at first base. McCarver behind the plate. Brock in left. Flood in center. Mike Shannon in right. The plate umpire is Bill McKinley of the American League. Phil Lins in the batter's box. Bob Gibson gets his sign. From his catcher, Tim McCarver, here is the first pitch of the ball game. Outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Yesterday's game won by the St. Louis Cardinals, 9-5. to five. Gibson delivers. Pops out of the glove of McCarver. It's high and it's ball two. Two balls and no strikes. It's kind of an overcast day. It was a bright, sunshiny morning. It's become a little overcast. But it's great for the ball players. No high sky. They shouldn't have too much of a problem with the sky. Maybe the breeze towards right field. Linz takes it outside and it's ball three. Three balls and no strikes on leadoff hitter Phil Linz. Linz yesterday was 0 for 4. Chokes up on that bat, takes a 3-0 pitch high, and he's on. Linz draws the base on balls. So the Yankees have a base runner at first base, and it brings up Bobby Richardson. Richardson. Little right-hand hitter who can spray that ball. He can hit that ball behind that runner. They shade him towards right center field. The pitch is high. Ball one. And Gibson with five straight bad pitches. White just standing on a bag. Gibson ready again at the belt. Here's a pitch. There's a strike. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Base runner at first base is Phil Lins. Richardson uses a heavy bat. They're moving the second baseman and the right fielder over towards the line. Johnny Keene and Red Shandings. There's a strike. Curveball. McCarver was all set to fire that ball if Lins decided to run. They've got a hit and run combine going here with Lins and Richardson. One ball, two strikes. Here's a pitch. Curveball, strike three. A breaking ball. Richardson called out on strikes, and it brings up Roger Maris. Young Tim McCarver switching off Gibson's fastball, finding out that he has better control of his curveball, has gone to it, and Gibson comes up with the strikeout. You know, that's the toughest thing about catching. Any catcher will tell you that. It's not catching the ball or blocking a plate. It's finding out what the pitcher's best pitch is that day. Gibson is a fastball pitcher, but so far his curveball has been his best pitch. Maris takes it inside corner, strike one, and Gibson is out in front of Roger Maris. One strike. Bill in, still at first base. Gibson with a hard slider, a good fastball, and a hard curveball. Really explodes. Dive bomber type. The pitch. High, ball one. One ball, one strike. The outfield is deep. 
way over in right center is Kurt Flood. A lot of room in direct center field and left center field. Lou Brock is over, but there's still plenty of room in center and left center. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Maris. Swung on down the left field line. It is going to be trouble if it stays very full ball. Whoa, they'd have been running for about maybe a day and a half if that ball would have been fair because Brock, we had just mentioned, was way over, and Maris did not get around on that ball. Joe, you know Roger Maris, you can count on one hand the ball's had eight hits to the left field side of second base during the course of the year, and that's bound to fool any left fielder. And, they, you know, the clubs all scout him, Phil, so uh, they're playing him to pull that ball. And now Gibson is talking to uh, Groat. He wants to move Brock over a little bit. And now Groat is sending out a message for Brock to move over. I tell you, Brock was way over in left center. If he'd have figured that run out at about seven cents a mile, he'd have made some money. He was way over there. One ball, two strikes, one out. Linz leads off first base. Gibson ready, the pitch. Outside. Two balls and two strikes, and I mean he is firing that ball. They use many expressions to describe a fastball pitcher, a hummer, flamethrower. He can pop that P. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. And that brings up Mickey Mantle. You know, the supreme compliment for a pitcher when he can throw real hard is to say or ask, can he bring it in? And if the answer is yes, of course, he is outstanding. With Gibson, they say he can bring it in even on Sunday when the buses ain't running. <laughs> so he can really throw. Here's Mantle. Did he swing? No, says Bill McKinley. And it's ball one. McCarver rubs up that baseball, but I think it's more to kind of cool off his hand. <laughs> yes, sir, Bob Gibson, a hard thrower. He plays good old country hardball. Not much strategy involved, just pump. Mantle waits. Linz leads off the pitch. Outside. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes. The history of Gibson has been, too, which, of course, for Cardinal fans is great. Red Shandings is the one that pointed out to me. Gibson will just throw hard all day. Sometimes a fellow lose a little bit, not this guy. Here's the 2 nothing pitch. There's the strike. A breaking ball, and it's two balls, one strike, two outs. Phil Lynn still at first base. Mantle batting left-handed. Now McCarver goes out to pick up the scrap of paper. This is going to be one of the neatest World Series ever played. We don't have a speck in this ballpark because everybody is pitching in. Two balls and one strike with two outs. Gibson ready. The pitch. Swings and he misses and oh boy. If you want a capsule comment of this game, it'll be Gibson's strength, which is his fastball, against the strength of the Yankees, which is the ability to hit that fastball. It's strength against strength. Mantle had a big good cut at that ball Gibson nods yes two balls two strikes two outs Lins leads off first base Gibson ready the 2-2 pitch low and outside and now Gibson thought he had it and it's ball three Mickey Mantle up there cool calm and collected just surveyed that ball Bill McKinley of the American League behind the plate right on top of it Three balls, two strikes. Lynn's at first base. He'll pick up about six steps now since the count runs full. There are two outs. He'll be off and running. There he goes. The pitch is swung on and missed. He struck him out. Mantle out on strikes. And the score is New York nothing and St. Louis coming to bat. You know, just eight years ago today, Don Larson pitched the only perfect World Series game ever. And talk about perfection. Here's a way to get a perfect shave. The cleanest, quickest, easiest shave in the world. How? Well, let's go. First, splash on lots of water. Really wet those whiskers. And to make them even wetter, moisture-rich Gillette Foamy. Regular or menthol. The only leading shaving cream with K34 hexachlorophene antiseptic. And now, the incomparable Gillette stainless steel blade. The easiest first shave of your life. 
Yes, Gillette guarantees you the best first shave and more superbly comfortable shaves per blade than with any other blade. Or your money back from Gillette. Quite a statement, quite a shave. Then top it off with crisp, refreshing Gillette Sun Up Aftershave. Smells better, feels better. Man, you've put on a happy face. And you feel as good as you look. Mel Stottlemyre taking his warm-up tosses. Phil, how'd that Gibson sound to you? That's uh, pretty rapid, Joe. You know, I was talking to the Yankee hitters, and they say that the background is real good here to see the pitcher. But uh, I guess Gibson overcomes that with that blazing speed. You're right. He doesn't throw slow curves or slow sliders. I tell you, when he throws a slow curve ball or a change of pace, I think the hitters jump two, three feet off the ground to make <laughs> sure they can swing at it. They don't see that many. Kurt Flood in at Banner's box. Yesterday's ball game won by the Cardinals 9-5. Mel Stottlemyre. Yogi Berra's choice to even up this series. The big right-hander delivers to Flood, who takes it outside, and it's ball one. Bottom half of the first inning, the Yankees were down in order in the first, as Bob Gibson, after walking Phil Lynn, struck out the side, Richardson, Maris, and Mantle. Stottlemyre delivers. It's inside, and it's ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Stottlemyre, big, tall right-hander, delivers to Flood. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike. Coaching at third base for the St. Louis Cardinals, it's Vern Benson. At first base, Joe Schultz. Stottlemyre delivers. Swung on and missed. And a strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Stottlemyre won nine ball games and lost three. An earned run average of 2.16. Came up. Middle of the season for the Yankees and did quite a job. Here is the 2-2 pitch. Outside, ball three. I guess on that pitching staff, Phil, it would have to be Stottlemyre and Ramos that really were the blowout patches that stopped it. Oh, yeah, Yogi was looking for any way to sneak Ramos in on this World Series. Along with Stottlemyre, they'd have had a lot of help. Here is the 3-2 pitch. Foul tip. And Kurt Flood stays alive. The count remains at three balls and two strikes. The flag is blowing out towards the right field pavilion, so it'll help the left-handed hitters. Three balls, two strike. Flood waits. Foul tip again. You know, before the game, Johnny Keane was talking about some intrigue involved with these Cardinals. They have been getting letters and postcards from a Fifi Latour who has been predicting everything. Says she consults with mystics, and he was telling the writers all about it. It was really interesting to listen to it, predicting scores and everything. I don't know, Phil. Bouncing ball foul. Vern Benson, it goes by him. Ever... What, what'd she predict for the series, Joe? She says it would take five. She thinks the Cardinals in five. Of course, I don't, Yogi don't believe it. He says they're going to have to play him. <laughs> Oh, the writers are really having a field day with that uh, kind of a story. She's been writing them for the last couple years. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Curveballs caught him. Flood is out on strikes as Stottlemyre really broke off a 3-2 curveball. Surprised he went to the curveball on 3-2. Well, Joe, I tell you, this kid has got so much poise, you'd think he'd be pitching in the big leagues for about 10 years. And, and as you know, being a catcher, you've got to have good control of that curveball to throw it on 3-2. and two. Guarantee you do. Here is uh, Lou Brock. Brock, a left-hand hitter. Boyer comes in close outside, and it's ball one. Cleet Boyer protecting against the bunt. Brock tried the bunt yesterday. Mel Stottlemyre against Bob Gibson. Big right-hander is ready. The pitch to Brock. Outside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Brock has his left wrist taped. He's got one finger bandaged. Two balls, no strikes. There's his strike. 
Mel Stottlemyre. So he's a very deliberate worker. He doesn't have a real fast wind-up. He just kind of gets his sign very slow and zoom. Here he comes again. Strike again on the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes. So far, this has been a game of pitch and catch. Gibson struck out the side. Richardson, Marison, Mantle. Stottlemyre struck out Flood. And now he's got a count of two balls and two strikes. Nobody on. Pitch. Curveball outside. Full count. Three balls and two strikes. Three balls, two strikes. One out. Outfield straight away for Brock. Here is the payoff pitch. Swung on a bouncing ball. Stottlemyer has it. Over to first in time. Brock is out. That ball gets over Stottlemyer's head. It's a base hit. But Stottlemyer, a fine fielding play. And there are two outs, and here is Bill White. Bill White. Here is a pitch by Stottlemyer. It's a strike right down the middle. An overcast day, and it's a good day for the ball players because they can see the ball. There's no worry about the high sky. The pitch. Swung on and missed. He had a good cut, and White wants him to take a look at that baseball. McKinley, he puts a new one in play. You know, the least little speck will really magnify because you're bearing down so much. Phil, you get a little bit of dirt on that ball. It looks like a barber pole coming up there. That's right, Joe. And you know what's amazing? Uh, people can't realize it comes up. Ball comes up there in a fraction of a second, and yet they can see that. I think the good hitters can read the president's name on the ball. That's what I used to hear. <laughs> Here's a two-strike pitch. Got him. Curveball. And Bill White nods his head, and he says, "Yes, it was." And Stottlemyre strikes out two out of the three. And some fine pitching in that first inning. So the score is: New York nothing, St. Louis nothing. Well, Elston Howard's been a busy guy. He hadn't had a chance to use that big bat of his. You know, Ellie started the season with a heavy bat, and then he changed to a light one in August. Then he switched back for the series. And this switch has helped him. You heard the ball game yesterday. And here's a move that'll really improve your day. Sun up aftershave. Start your day with the new Gillette Sun Up, and man, you'll put on a happy face. Sun Up smells better, feels better. It's manlier. Right now... You can get a free sample bottle when you buy this Gillette World Series Special. The adjustable razor with the exclusive nine-position micrometer dial that lets you select the blade angle that matches your skin and beard exactly. Also, it contains a dispenser of sensational Gillette stainless steel blades, the only stainless blades engineered to fit this razor exactly. And every blade is guaranteed to give you the best first shave of your life and more just like it every blade than with any other blade. Are your money back from Gillette. Adjustable razor with Gillette stainless steel blades, plus a free sample of crisp, refreshing sun up. Just a dollar fifty. Elston Howard with the big bat up there takes a curveball and it's high and it's ball one. That's a 38 ouncer that he's swinging. And in this day and age, that's a heavy bat because everybody's using 31 ouncers. Swings and misses one ball and one strike a slider. I have your bet you use, Phil. Well, strange as it seems, I used to use a 36-36, but I choked up about a foot. You had it right by the trademark. Right you could have either end. <laughs> Swings and misses and a strike two. Howard gets that big bat around all right. It's a thick handle bat. I picked it up before the game. In fact, I think in the offseason, they string telephone wires on it. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Nobody out. Gibson against Howard. No score. Gibson delivers. Curveball fouled off. Out of play. Bounces back into the stands, and somebody's got a World Series souvenir. In the outfield shades Howard towards right center field. Once again, a lot of room in left center. They don't expect him to pull Gibson. Curveball. Howard, give it the old how do you do as it stayed inside. Kind of expected that curveball to break more than it did. Stiff breeze blowing towards right field. It'll really help the ball hit towards right field. 2-2 pitch. Struck him out. That's four strikeouts in a row for Bob Gibson.
And here is Joe Pepitone. Pepitone, a left-hand hitter. Gibson just pouring it on. He is stacking that lumber. Raring back and firing. Great arm. He has struck out four. Stottlemyre has struck out two. Pepitone, batting left-handed. Waiting for the pitch from Bob Gibson. Right-hander has a sign. Here it is. Low, ball one. Gibson puts so much effort into every pitch that he kind of falls towards the first base side of the mound, but he's a good fielder. Curve ball, a strike. One ball, one strike. Fouls it back. One ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes. Pepitone waiting. Bob Gibson. There's a line drive. Kenny Boyer leaps and makes a sensational play. Joe Pepitone line hard to Kenny Boyer at third base who leaped high to make a fine play. Pepitone hit that ball right on the nose. Looked like it was certain extra bases, but Boyer, once again, just taking up right where he left off yesterday, made a fine play. And here is Tom Trash with two outs and nobody on. There's the strike. One strike, no balls. Trash wearing a glove on his left hand. Waits, and here's Gibson's pitch outside. One ball, one strike. With some friendly needling between the Boyer brothers yesterday. Here is the 1-1 pitch. Tap foul, strike two. And Pete hit a ball, looked like it was going to be a home run. He got second base when it was caught, and Kenny hollered over to him. You got to pull that ball in this ballpark, babe. Tremendous story at that. Brother against brother. Here is the pitch by Gibson. Way outside. Two balls and two strikes. I'll tell you, that McCarver will be opening doors with his right hand tonight. That left hand will be soaking. 2-2 two -two pitch, tap foul. You know, you just use a little sponge. That, that glove looks big, but the pocket, it's only two pieces of leather. And a little old sponge, and everybody tells you, oh, it don't hurt. No, my hand is always swollen this much. Here is the 2-2 two -two pitch now by Gibson. Tap foul, a curveball. That's why you see a lot of catchers catch with the uh, finger outside the glove. It's more for protection than anything else. Bob Gibson. Ready, once again, Tresh Waits, the pitch. Struck him out. Five strikeouts for Bob Gibson. Two again in this inning. Three in the first inning. And the score is New York nothing and St. Louis nothing. Who's been using my right guard? Many a man has been asking that question lately. Today, the whole family is using Gillette right guard power spray deodorant because nothing touches you but the spray itself. It's always your own personal deodorant. And two seconds gives you 24-hour protection. Right guards, not a gummy roll-on, not a messy cream. It's a refreshing mist, cool and gentle, dries on contact. And remember, nothing touches you but the spray itself. Seems like families everywhere are switching to right guard because today it's America's number one deodorant. And while we're talking about outstanding products, how about that Gillette stainless steel blade? Gillette guarantees the best first shave of your life and more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other blade, or your money back from Gillette. Discover for yourself the matchless uniformity of Gillette stainless steel blades. Ken Boyer, Dick Grote, and Tim McCarver to lead it off in the bottom of the second inning. Nothing, nothing. The only base runner for the Yankees was Phil Lins. He walked, and there have been five strikeouts in the line out. The Cardinals went down in order, one, two, three, 
two strikeouts and one right back to Stottlemyre in that first inning. So here we go. Mel Stottlemyre against Ken Boyer. Curveball is strike. Boy, so far, and it's very, very early. But a quick indication that both pitchers appear to have real good stuff. Boyer, a bouncy ball. Lends it short, has it. Here's the throw. Boyer's out. So with one out, here is Dick Grote. Grote, a very effective hitter at all times, but especially so with uh, men on. So you like to pitch with no base runners because he'll like to, he likes to break up that infield with hit and run plays. And that man getting on in front of him is what he looks for. But he doesn't have him this time as Boyer went out. And so Grote against Stottlemyre is the battle. The pitch. Strike. Boy, Phil, the way that Stottlemyre and Gibson's going, they're the kind of guys you want to pitch on getaway day. They don't waste any time. They sure don't, Joe. Bouncing ball. Third baseman Cleet Boyer has it over to first, and there are two outs. Well, as you heard Phil Rizzuto talking about it, Stottlemyre's sinker ball get a lot of ground balls. There have been five hitters up, two strikeouts and three ground balls. Here is Tim McCarver now. Tim had a big day yesterday. Had a triple and a double. Scored a run. Left-handed hitter, Tim McCarver. Outfield straight away. Boyer is shade in at third. The pitch to McCarver is outside. Ball one. A lot of responsibility on this young man's shoulders. He is calling the pitches. 22 years old, first year, really in the big leagues. Is there all last year. But off and on, here is the curveball strike. One ball, one strike. But he has really taken charge. Phil, this Donald curveball is surprising me. I don't think it was that good. He does have a good one. He didn't use it near as much during the season as he's using it today, Joe. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fouled off. Strike two. You don't think he may have changed a little bit because of the scouting reports? Could very well be. They are kept a pretty good secret, but uh, Yogi got them, and uh, he could very well have changed. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Nobody on. Bottom of the second inning. Stottlemyre delivers. Her ball misses. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Stottlemyre tried to throw that ball in the outside part of the plate, hoping that McCarver would give up on it, and it would break over and catch the outside corner. But it missed completely, and the count evens out at two and two. Two outs and nobody on. No score. Time is called now. And I'll bet you some smart bench jockey hollered it's 1.30. <laughs> 2 pitch now. Bouncing ball. Lends to his right nicely. He has it. The long throw. He gets him. A fine stretch by Joe Pepitone. McCarver can get down that line. And Pepitone stretched it out, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. The score is New York nothing, St. Louis nothing. To look and feel sharp, use the stainless blade that outsells all the others made. Get 12 blades while the price is low. It's a special from Gillette. Let's go. Here's your opportunity to save 28 cents and get weeks of shaving comfort. It's a Gillette World Series special. Two six-blade dispensers, that's 12 incomparable Gillette stainless steel blades for just $1.50. Now's the time for you men who may not have tried this sensational blade to find out why it's the number one seller by far. You're guaranteed the best first shave and more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other blade or your money back from Gillette. 12 stainless steel blades for only $1.50. You save 28 cents. Get 12 blades while the price is low. It's a special from Gillette. Let's go. Cleet Boyer leads it off. Boyer, Stottlemyre, and Phil Lins as we go into the top half of the third inning. Cleet, right-handed hitter. Waits, and here's Gibson's pitch. Swung on and missed strike one. Boyer yesterday, one for four, and scored a run. Gibson ready again. 
Bouncing ball, right side. Maxwell at second base, over. He has it. White, one out. Maxwell to White, and there's one out. As Boyer hit one off the end of the bat, broke his bat, a slider. And here is Mel Stottlemyre. What kind of hitter is he, Phil? Well, Joe, the uh, next to last game he pitched, he had five for five. I thought it was a, really an error in the paper until I <laughs> saw it again. <laughs> he made it look easy. Five for five. Well, we'll have to say he's a pretty good hitter. <laughs> Here's a pitch. There's a strike. Five for five. That's usually a good two and a half years for a pitcher. <laughs> Gibson ready again. Swung on and missed. He had a good cut. Bob Gibson. He's pitching like he's trying to catch the 515. Here's a two-strike pitch. Strike three. Bob Gibson has six strikeouts. There are two outs here in the top of the third. And it brings up Phil Lins, who was the only base runner. He drew a base on balls to open the game. Pepitone is hit the only ball hard. A fine play by Boyer, a line drive. And Cleet Boyer bounced out. The rest strikeouts. Linz takes a strike. As Bob Gibson gets the sign and throws a strike. And here he comes again. Line drive. That is a base hit. Right center field. Over fast is Kurt Flood. Up with the ball. Lins a wide turn. Holes now. He makes a big turn around first base. As you can hear that reaction from the crowd, that kid doesn't take anything for granted. I'll tell you that. When he makes that turn, if you bobble it just a little bit, he's gone. Joe, you know, Phil Lins before the game said he was going to use Howard's heavy bat today and just punch the ball. Yesterday he used a light bat and he said it was way out in front of Sadecki. It certainly paid off for him as he punched that one. He's got a good lead. Richardson waits. Swung on. Fly ball left field. Brock coming over fast. He can't get a base hit. Bobbles the ball. By him. Lins may try to score. They're going to hold him at third now, though, as in the second base goes Bobby Richardson. Frank Crossetti way up the line as Phil Lins really digging hard. When he saw Lins, uh, Brock bobble that ball, Lins had an idea about scoring but could not score, and it's a two-base hit for Bobby Richardson. So quickly, the Yankees have base runners at second and third, two outs, and here is Roger Maris. That ball took a crazy hop in left field. And good base running. Lins, I tell you, I thought he was going to come around. Crossetti, three quarters of the way up the line, stopped him. Here's the pitch to Maris. Swung on, foul ball, out of play. Nobody can get it, upper deck. Beyond the bullpen in left field. After two easy outs, Phil Lins lined hard to right center field. Richardson lined hard to left field. One strike count, nothing, nothing ball game. Top of the third, Bob Gibson delivers. Swung on and fouled back again. Up in the uh, super deluxe boxes that they have here. Now McCarver goes out to talk to uh, Bob Gibson. In a spot like this, you want to make sure... If your pitcher's going to waste the ball, where he's going to waste it? If he's going to be high and inside or if he's going to stay away from him? As fast as Gibson is, you don't want to leave anything to chance. Or if he's going to go for the strikeout. You want to know that, too, certainly. All set now. Here is the two-strike pitch to Maris. Swung on, a bouncing ball. A shortstop, Grote has it. The play's going to be the first base in time. Maris bounces out, Grote to White, that ends the inning. And the score is New York nothing and St. Louis nothing. Men, wouldn't you like to start the day with the best shave in the world? The quickest, easiest shave a man can get? Here's how. All you need is hot water, lots of it, and then the shaving cream that supersaturates your beard throughout your shave. Extra rich Gillette Foaming, America's only leading shaving cream that cleanses your skin with K34 hexachlorophene antiseptic while you shave. And to look sharp and feel sharp, use the Gillette stainless steel blade. Gillette guarantees you the best first shave of your life and more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other. Or your money back from Gillette. Clean, close shaves, blade after blade after blade. And for a perfect ending, Gillette's crisp new sunup. Smells better, feels better. Splash on a dash, and you've put on a happy face. 
matchless shaving comfort from Gillette, the people who know men best. Bottom half of the third inning, nothing and nothing. Mel Stottlemyre against Bob Gibson. And Mike Shannon, who undoubtedly would get a big hand from this crowd for that home run he hit yesterday. Mike Shannon, the hitter. Stottlemyre ready. Shannon Wade swung on. Line drive. Left field. In fast as trash. Can't get it. A base hit. Mike Shannon with a base hit. First pitch. And he breaks Stottlemyre's streak. Just as Phil Lins broke Bob Gibson's streak. So Shannon is on. Maxville is the hitter. Maxville can handle that bat. Bob Gibson, a pretty good hitter, is up next. See how they'll play it. Shannon has good speed. Boyer is in close. He is looking for the bunt. Here's a pitch. Maxville swings and fouls went off. He was not going to bunt on that one. Vern Benson, the third base coach, goes to a series of signs. They've got a hit and run combine going. Maxville, a good man. You'd almost want to pitch out on general principles with these two guys going. Let's see what happens. Watch Shannon. There's a quick throw. Stottlemyre's thinking about it. Howard is ready. Cardinals with good speed and good men who can handle that bat. Shannon a good lead. We'll watch him. Stottlemyre at the belt. He holds. Swung and missed by Maxville and a strike two. Two strikes. No balls. The hit and run play is not a play that you try to keep a big inning going by first and third situation. You use it to try to stay away from the double play, which will wreck you. Here's a pitch. Swung on. Base hit. Left field by Maxville. Shannon rounds second base. Pulls up as Tresh fires that ball in the third. Cut off by Phil Lenz. So the Cardinals have base runners. At first and second. And Bob Gibson is the hitter. And his crowd comes alive. Bob Gibson. We were with this yesterday. The Yankees pulled off that play, tried it, where Lindsey Shortstop will break towards third base. Let's see what happens. At the bell, Stottlemyre. Linz, they're going to bunt outside. Ball one. Watch the possible throw at second base on the part of the Yankees. Howard likes to throw that ball. Pepitone is coming in very fast at first base. Cleet Boyer at third has to hold. Good speed on the bases. Mike Shannon at second base. Del Maxville is at first base. Nobody out. Stottlemyre ready. Gibson waits. Here comes Boyer in. Gibson's going to bunt. Bunts it right in front of the plate. Up with the ball is Howard. His plays at first base over to Richardson in time. A beautiful bunt. And now Richardson runs the ball in as Shannon at third base started to make a bluff run towards the plate. So Bob Gibson with a perfect bunt moves the men into scoring position. Shannon over to third. Maxville is second. There's one out, and Kurt Flood is the hitter. Joe, he can get down that line as fast as anybody I've seen on the Cardinal. I tell you, Bill, there are many on a Cardinal club that in a foot race will uh, go with Gibson. He almost had himself a base hit. Kurt Flood, who was out on strikes his first time up, Base runners at second, third, a full windup by Stottlemyre. Here's the pitch. Swung on. It's a bouncing ball. Phil Lenz has the ball. The run will score. The throw is in time. Flood is out at first base, but the Cardinals lead one to nothing as Mike Shannon comes in to score. Maxville takes third. That ball was not hit hard. And the Cardinals jump out to a one to nothing lead. Flood out from Lenz to Pepitone. Gets a run batted in on the play. And here is Lou Brock with Del Maxville at third base. Brock bounced out his first time up. Wade swings right back at Stottlemyre. He has it over to first in time. That ball was hit like a shot. He is not hurt. Made the play to first. And the inning is over. 
So the score is St. Louis 1 and New York nothing. Want the cleanest, easiest shaves in the world? The best first shave of your life? Try the Gillette stainless steel blade, and you'll find out after one stroke why it's the number one seller by far. Yes, Gillette guarantees you the best first shave of your life, and more just like it, every blade than with any other blade, or your money back from Gillette. Here's superb shaving satisfaction, blade after blade, dispenser after dispenser. The Gillette stainless sets a new standard for shaving comfort. See for yourself. And we pause 30 seconds for station identification. More than 130,000 better gas stations display the familiar bright yellow Anco windshield wiper service cabinet. Please remember, the man at the gas pump can replace or refill your streaking blades in seconds. The fresh new exclusive Anco cushionite rubber gives you clear, restful vision that gets you there sooner, safer. You're better off always with Anco by Anderson. Listen to Bill Mazur's post-game wrap-up on WNBC AM and FM, New York. Mickey Mantle leads it off for the Yankees. Top of the fourth inning, Bob Gibson. Here is the first pitch. It's a strike. Yankees, no runs, two hits. Cardinals, one run, two hits. One to nothing, top of the fourth. Mantle wants him to take a look at that baseball. Mantle was out on strikes in the first inning. Gibson has struck out six. Stottlemyre struck out two. And as Phil Rizzuto told us earlier, look for the ground ball, and that's what they've been doing against Stottlemyre. Here is the pitch to Mantle. Swung on and missed. And it's strike two. There was the first slow pitch that Bob Gibson has thrown in this game. A real slow curveball. And I can't imagine that uh, shock had as much to do <laughs> as anything else on that pitch. Two strike pitch to Manley. He was gonna bunt, takes it high, ball one. You know, Manley can bunt with two strikes and does it very effectively. He's the greatest I've ever seen, Joe, doing that great eye, bunting with two strikes on him. Mickey Mantle. Here is the one-two pitch by Gibson. High ball two. I'll tell you this, Mantle, you watch that fella dressed in the clubhouse and you just wonder how he does it. He tapes both legs. Looks like a half a mummy act when he gets ready to play. Just all taped up. You look at him in a uniform, you think he's posing for one of those before, uh, you know, and after ads. Here's the 2-2 pitch outside, ball three. Now it's a full count on Mickey Mantle. One to nothing. The Cardinals are out in front. Breeze is blowing out towards right field. Overcast day, but a nice day for baseball. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Foul tip, and that got Bill McKinley, the umpire. Boy, those little nicks like that, those are the kind that really sting. Woo! Make you flunk the cavity test. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the fourth, one to nothing. Cardinals lead. Cardinals won yesterday, nine to five. Pitch. Strike is called. Mantle is out on strikes. And that's seven strikeouts for Bob Gibson. And that brings up Elston Howard. Bob Gibson has struck out seven. Here is a pitch by Gibson. Swung on and fouled off. Strike one. Bob Gibson, ready now, the pitch to Howard. Low, one ball, one strike. Bill McKinley behind a play in the American League, Ken Burkhart at first base, National League. Hank Soar, American League, is at second base. Vinny Smith is at third base. Frank Sicorio is behind a plate. Yesterday is down the right field line. Here's the pitch, swung on and fouled off again. One ball, two strikes. And down the left field line from the American League, Al Smith. All the umpires rotating this time. Work different bases or different positions every game. 
One ball, two strikes. One to nothing. Cardinals lead. Here comes Gibson. Inside and high. Two balls and two strikes. And you can hear the crowd kind of umpire on that play. Two balls and two strikes to count now. Here's the pitch to Howard. Sidearm. Swung on. Hot shot. Down in the left field corner. Extra bases. Here goes Elston Howard. Rounding first base. Brock is up with the ball. And Howard goes into second base with a double. Bob Gibson sidearmed Elston Howard. Got the ball inside. And if you get that ball inside, it makes a real room service pitch out of it. And Howard really jumped on it. And Bongo down that line. He's on it. Second here is Joe Pepitone. Got to get that ball outside when you sidearm him. That is a bad pitch, Joe, when you get it inside because the bat is stepping in the bucket anyway, and it's right in his power. Joe Pepitone now with Elston Howard in scoring position. Gibson ready, the pitch. Curveball, high, ball one. Cardinals scored on a single by Shannon, a single by Maxwell, a beautiful sacrifice bunt, and a bouncing ball hit by Flood, which he was thrown out at first, and Shannon scored. Howard at second, Pepitone waits. Whoa, down he goes. He waited just a bit too long. The ball was by him before he went down. He's high and inside. He's trying to jam him with the ball. It's kind of a delayed reaction. So it's two balls and no strikes. They play Pepitone straight away. Two nothing pitch. Swung on and missed strike one. On defense, watch the center fielder when you go to the ballpark, and he'll give you the tip-off as to how they're playing a fella. And many times on how they're trying to pitch him, whether it be inside or outside. Flood is directly behind the bag in center field, straight away. 2-1 pitch. A looper, left field. It's going to be trouble. Brock coming in fast. He can't make the play. It gets by him. Up with the ball is the shortstop. Crow throws the second. Elston Howard stops at third base and does not score. Crossetti stopped him. As Grote eventually came up with that ball, Brock could not come up with the ball. It got by him, a little looper. Grote threw the ball to second. It's a double for Pepitone. Elston Howard could not break off second base. Uh, he was fearful of a catch by Brock. So he waited to see the ball land. And with one out, Crosetti put the red light up to stop Elston Howard. So now there's a conference on the mound. Bill White, Bob Gibson, and Tim McCarver as Tom Tresh is the hitter with base runners at second and third and one out. So we have a little bit of an oddity, Phil. Two doubles and nobody scored. Well, it was a tough play for Corsetti to call, Joe, because it looked like when Grote came up with the ball, he had a chance to fire home. Now they're going to put the hitter Tresh on to load the bases to set up a double play situation. And it'll be up to Cleet Boyer. You know that Brock all year long uh, has been making catches that a lot of people uh, gave up on when the ball was hit. And you could see Elston Howard had been told that many, many times. He waited to see that ball hit. It was a real fine hustling play by Dick Grote. He got out there a long way. You're right, Joe. He came from a shortstop spot to fairly deep left field to come up with that ball. So now the bases are loaded. Cleet Boyer is at first base. Joe Pepitone is at second base. Elston Howard is at third base. Tom Tresh, rather. Cleet Boyer is the hitter. Tresh at first base. Pepitone at second. And Elston Howard at third. Gibson is ready. Cleet Boyer waits. Swung on and missed strike one. Cardinals intentionally walking Tom Tresh to set up a double play situation. One out. Cleet Boyer, the hitter. Cardinals leading one to nothing. Top of the fourth. Gibson slowing down his pace just a bit. Ready now. Swung on. A fly ball. Center field. Kurt Flood coming in. He makes the catch. Howard tags up. Here comes the throw. It is cut off by Bill White, and the ball game is tied up. One and one. As Cleet Boyer comes up with a sacrifice fly to... Drive in Elston Howard, and it's a one-to-one -one ball game, and it brings up Mel Stottlemyre. Epitone still at second base. Tresh is still at first base. 
There are two away, and Stottlemyer, the hitter. A sacrifice fly by Cleet Boyer. And we're all tied up here in the top of the first. Gibson at the belt delivers. Swung on and missed. Strike one. I'll tell you, that's Stottlemyer. He swings like he knows what that bat's for. Pepitone edging off second. Trash off first. The one strike pitch by Gibson. High. One ball and one strike. One one, all tied up here. Here's the one one pitch. Inside, ball two. They don't expect Stottlemyer to be able to pull the ball as the flood is shallow and in right center. Shannon is not too deep in right field. The deepest man is Brock in left field. A lot of room in left center field. Infield is straight away. 2-1 pitch by Gibson. It's high and it's ball three. Three balls and a strike now. Stottlemyer takes a look down at Cross City. See how Yogi wants to play this. Will he turn him loose and hit a 3-1 cripple pitch or will he have him taken? Gibson at the belt. Here's the pitch. Stottlemyer swings and misses strike two, and there is the best endorsement I can see for a pitcher. He turned him loose on three and one, and he had a real good cut. So it's a full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The base runners will be off. Pepitone off second, Tresh off first. There they go. The pitch is swung on, and Misty struck him out. Stottlemyer is out on strikes. That's the eighth strikeout for Bob Gibson. That ends the inning. And the score is St. Louis one and New York one. Talk about speed, about base runners. You have to bring up that name of Lou Brock and even Bob Gibson. Brock especially. He's got speed, speed, and more speed. And you might take a leaf out of Brock's book and latch on fast to this World Series special from Gillette. It's a bargain opportunity to find out how clean and easy and smooth shaving can be. It's your chance to get two six-blade dispensers of Gillette stainless steel blades, 12 of them, for only $1.50 and save 28 cents. That's weeks and weeks, yes, months, of incomparable shaves. But it'll only take one stroke to find out why this blade is America's number one seller by far. Gillette guarantees you the best first shave of your life and more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other blade. Or your money back from Gillette. Look for this World Series special, but act fast. 12 Gillette stainless steel blades for only $1.50. You save 28 cents. <laughs> Bill White, Ken Boyer, and Dick Rowe to lead it off. We're all tied up here in St. Louis. Cardinals won the first game 9-5. to five. Cardinals broke the ice here in the bottom of the third inning. The Yankees came right back in the top of the fourth. That's the kind of series this is going to be. Both these ball clubs really had to battle to get into this World Series. And this constant battle will just continue. Mel Stottlemyre. Against Bill White. Here's the pitch. White swings. It's a bouncy ball. Pepitone over. Far to his right. The pitcher will have to cover the throw in time. Nice play. Pepitone really ranged far to his right. And Mel Stottlemyer got off that mound in a hurry and got the very fast Bill White. So there is one out. Here's Ken Boyer. Boy, that's a play they practice in spring training hour after hour. And you wonder even why they practice it so much. Then you see a play like that last one, and you know why. Low ball one to Ken Boyer. New York one, St. Louis one, bottom of the fourth inning. Mel Stottlemyer against Bob Gibson. Boyer takes it outside. Two balls and no strikes. Elston Howard with that kind of trapper's glove he's got back there. He can really handle that thing. He never makes a pitcher look wild. He's just reaching around like he's sitting in a rocking chair. There's a ball well hit to center field. Back goes Maris. Back, back, back. He's got room. Makes the catch right in front of the 425-foot marker. There was a hardest ball hit yet. 
dead center field. Roger Maris got a good jump and hauled it in. Matt Maris really been playing good defensive ball for you, too. I was surprised uh, when I really found out how well-rounded a ball player Maris is, Phil. That's true, Joe. He has been underrated defensively, and he's got one of the strongest and most accurate throwing arms in the uh, big leagues, and he's going to be the Yankee center fielder for many years to come. So there are two outs, and here is Dick Groth. That was the first fly ball, by the way. Curve ball outside, ball one. Shannon a base hit, Maxville a base hit. Flood got the RBI when he bounced out. Grote takes it over the inside corner, strike one. The Yankees got it on two doubles and a sacrifice fly. All tied, 1-1, one, one. two outs, bottom of the fourth. 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside, high, two balls, one strike. Young Mel Stottlemyre, who did such a great job for the Yankees, out on that mound. He's a cool, deliberate worker. The pitch, swung on, bouncing ball, foul, right off Dick Groat's foot. Oh, boy, the bunions are really barking. He's hopping around like he didn't get all the dance lessons. <laughs> oh, he's going to be late tonight. He is walking around. That left foot is really talking to him. Mm -mm. The bunions are barking. Hang in there, Richard. The Yankee bench kind of giving it to him a little bit. He's going to be about 20 minutes late for the dance tonight. He's scratching it. You don't care how many people are looking at him. <laughs> it hurts. I don't blame him. <laughs> Two balls and two strikes to count. Dick Grote is the hitter. Stottlemyre ready. Here's the pitch. Whoops, almost got him. It stayed inside. The curveball didn't break, and it's a full count of three balls and two strikes. But when you hit yourself on a toe like that, Phil, it always seems like it's the hardest ball you've hit all day. <laughs> you get good wood on it, Joe. <laughs> three balls, two strikes, two outs. Stottlemyre ready. Here's the pitch. Inside and high, and Grote draws the base on balls. He's on at first base. That is the first walk given up by Stottlemyre. It brings up Tim McCarver. All tied up here. New York won. St. Louis won. Bottom of the fourth. Cardinals won the first game, 9-5. to five. We've got a good pitcher's battle on hand here today. Gibson against Stottlemyre, all tied, 1-1. McCarver, a left-hand hitter up there. Flame straight away. Maybe a shade towards right field. Swung on, bouncing ball up the middle. Linz is there. Nice play behind second. Over to first in time. He ended up at the second base spot as he went four to his left to make a fine play to retire McCarver. And the score is New York 1 and St. Louis 1. Men, would you like the cleanest, the quickest, easiest shaves in the world? It's really very simple. First, splash on lots of hot water. Really wet those whiskers. And then make them even wetter with moisture-rich Gillette Foamy, regular or menthol. It's tiny moisture bubbles super saturate your beard. And Gillette Foamy is the only leading shave cream containing K34, hexachlorophene, and aseptic. It cleanses your skin while you shave. Now for the easiest first shave of your life, slip an incomparable Gillette stainless steel blade in your Gillette adjustable razor. And discover why this blade has become the number one seller by far. Gillette guarantees you more superbly comfortable shaves every blade than with any other blade or your money back from Gillette. And every shave can have a perfect ending. Splash on a dash of refreshing sun-up aftershave. Smells better, feels better, manlier. Women like it too. And that's it for real shaving luxury. Foamy, Gillette stainless steel blades, and new sun-up aftershave. Bob Gibson against Phil Lenz. Lenz had a base hit. Last time up, the pitch is a curveball in the outside corner, and it's strike one. 
interesting what uh, Phil brought up, that uh, Lenz went to a heavy bat to punch that ball. Got a base hit with it. He takes a curveball outside. We're even up at one and one. One ball, one strike. Bob Gibson in a 1-1 ball game. Hooked up with young Mel Stottlemyre. Time is called again. Now we're ready. Linz is back in the box. Flood fairly shallow in center field. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on a bouncing ball up the middle. Grow to his left. Has a nice play over to first. In time. Nice play by Bill White as he was able to hold his foot on the bag. Grote roamed far to his left. And there is one out. And it brings up Bobby Richardson. Some pretty good plays so far, Phil. Certainly are on this fast infield, boy. How they get to that ball, I'll never know. Here is Bobby Richardson. The pitch by Gibson. Low. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. Bouncing ball foul. And it's one ball and one strike. Gibson's from the old school. He figures that if he doesn't have his good stuff, there's no sense fooling around and prolonging the agony. And if he's got his good stuff, turn it loose. He doesn't waste any time. He grabs that ball and he pumps it. One ball, one strike. Fouled off again. It's one ball and two strikes. Spectator is scrambling for that baseball. One ball, two strikes, one out. One, one ball game. Here's a pitch by Gibson. Swung on, a little looper. Dick Grote is going out fast. Loop Rock is coming in. And Dick Grote, a sensational catch by Dick Grote with his back to the infield. Oh, what a play that was. A little looper. And at full speed with his back to the infield, he caught that ball over the shoulder. And his momentum carried him about 15 more feet. A fine play by Dick Groth. There are two outs. Roger Maris, the hitter, with two outs. He holds up in time. Phil, I guess the toughest thing about a play like that is really not catching the ball, but when you hear those thundering feet of the other guys, you, you think you're going to get a hit, That's huh? right. you got to look out for those outfielders. Here's the pitch. Ball two. Do you get a chance to holler the guys off on a play like that? No, you really don't, Joe. But what amazed me was Groot, who was not real fast, got such a quick jump on that ball. He's got the sure hands. He got out there in real good shape. Two balls, no strikes. Roger Maris swings and fouls one back. Do you think a guy like Groot maybe breaks on the signal like he sees McCarver give the sign he maybe breaks soon? Definitely. He reminds me of Lou Boudreau, who couldn't move too well, but knew how to play each hitter, and on each sign, he'd be ready to break right, left, in, or back. Is that what you did? No, I was a little faster than Groat, Joe. <laughs> Popped up down the left field line. Lou Brock is coming in. He's calling for the ball, and he makes the play. So Maris flies to Brock in left field. Crowd gives Dick Groat a nice hand for that sensational play. And at the middle of the fifth inning, the score is New York 1 and St. Louis 1. The first half of today's game has been brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. The second half of today's game is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. Today's host, Plymouth. Roaring 65, Roaring 65. Roaring 65s, big plush Plymouth Fury, swinging Belvedere, compact Valiant, fastback Barracuda, four new kinds of Plymouth, 60 models in all. Roaring 65s, Roaring 65s. Plymouth Fury, Plymouth Belvedere, Plymouth Valiant, Plymouth Barracuda, the Roaring 65s, now at your Plymouth dealers. Something for everyone, the Roaring 
Mike Shannon to lead it off, and now to bring you the rest of the way, here is Phil Rizzuto. Thank you, Joe, and it's the bottom third of the order that did the damage for the Cardinals. In the third inning, Shannon takes a pitch low and away, ball one. Shannon single to left field and has scored the Cardinal one run in the ball game. His nickname out here is the Moon Man, and he almost hit one to the moon yesterday. A tremendous home run. Stottlemyre ready. The right hand is pitch is low ball two, two and nothing. When Stottlemyre is missing, it's usually just below the knees or a little bit outside or inside. Fleet Boyer guarding the line at third. Outfield straight away on Shannon, a tall, slender right hand batter. The 2 nothing delivery is in there. Strike call, 2-1. On deck, Dal Maxville. 1-1 one, one to score. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Stottlemyre's 2-1 delivery. Ground ball to the right side. Richardson to his left. Has it one-handed. Flips off balance in time. One away. And Shannon was trying to go that way as Richardson was shading him a little bit over towards second base. That'll bring up Dal Maxville, who singled the left field in the third inning. His first World Series hit, filling in for Julian Javier, who was injured, the regular second baseman for the Cardinals. On deck, Bob Gibson. Stottlemyre's pitch it on the ground, a big hop at a boy. He's got it. Fires to Pepitone, it's two out. Oh, two quick outs here in the bottom of the fifth. And it brings up Bob Gibson, who laid down a beautiful sacrifice punt in the third inning to move the runners along. Two out, nobody on. Stottlemyre kicks, delivers a curve, swing and a miss, strike one. He missed that one by a foot. I guess a lot of times, Joe, those pitchers go up and guess for that fastball and go for the long ball. You know how they talk about it. Gibson's got pretty good power. He should have, big as he is. There's a ball hit to center field for a base hit. And it sounded like he broke the bat on that one, hit it right off the end of the bat. But a single right over second in the center field. And that's the third hit for the Cardinals in the ball game. Brings up Kurt Flood, who struck out. Bounced to the shortstop, but got credit for a run batted in as he drove in Mike Shannon in the third inning. Right hand hitting Kurt Flood. Score tied at 1-1. Gibson with a short lead off first. Stottlemyre delivers. It's low and outside. Ball one. Well, the Cardinals are not sacrificing any speed on the bases with Gibson out there. And with Flood up and Brock to follow. And then White. Man, they got guys that can fly. The stretch, the pitch is a little bit low. Ball two. Two and nothing. Flood had a triple and a single. Two runs batted in and scored a run in yesterday's ball game. Finished the regular season batting 311. Two men are out. Stottlemyre stretches. His pitch, a ground ball, bouncing towards Richardson. Bobby on the short hop. Nice play. Tags the bag for the unassisted force play. And Richardson took that ball on a real short hop. Could have been trouble. And the score at the end of the fifth inning, the Yankees won, the Cardinals won. Something exciting. Something exciting. The 1965 Plymouth Fury, the biggest, plushest Plymouth ever. The Roaring 65s. Nineteen sixty-five Plymouth Fury. Twenty-two big plush models, solidly in the low price class. 
big, lush, 65 Plymouth Fury. Something exciting, something exciting. Now, with all the roaring 65s at your Plymouth dealers. Something for everyone, the roaring 65s. 30 seconds for station identification. The man at the gas pump doesn't always remember to ask you if your wiper blades have gone dead and can't stop streaking your windshield. So if they are streakers, you remind him to show you a pair of fresh new Anco blades or refills. He can slip them on in seconds, and then you're ready for any storm. You'll get there sooner, safer, with Anco by Anderson. Listen to Bill Mace's post-game wrap-up on WNBC, AM and FM, New York. All right, Mickey Mantle steps into the batter's box. Mick's been up twice, struck out both times against the fireballing, uh, throwing Bob Gibson. Gibson with eight strikeouts. A 1-1 ball game in the top of the sixth. The right-hander ready. His pitch is a curve, high and outside, ball one. Mick was two for five in yesterday's ball game, both singles. Gibson kicks, delivers. It's outside, ball two, two and nothing. On deck, Elston Howard. Third flood really deep in right field, shading Mantle a little bit towards right center. Two-nothing pitch. Low and away, ball three. Mick takes a quick flash down at Frank Rossetti. They have an inviting right field wall here at Bush Stadium. Three-nothing pitch. Mickey swings and fouls it off. Joe, he got the green light. You almost have to turn those big guys loose, boy. He can hit on a trademark and hit over there the way he swings. <laughs> I tell you, you know, as a catcher, Phil, a lot of times you can almost hear that back leg screw into the ground when they get that sign. <laughs> he was really sad, wasn't he? <laughs> he was. All right, it's 3-1 to Mickey. Gibson ready. His pitch is outside. It's ball four. And that's the third walk given up by Gibson in the ball game. One of them intentionally. Just for my own curiosity, I never got a 3-0 hit sign, did you? Are you kidding? Never. Okay. They had me taken on the first pitch sometimes, but it must be a great feeling. Oh, I'd love to have had it. I just had to get a take sign with two strikes. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> Here's Elson Howard. He has struck out in double and has scored the Yankees one run in the ball game. Ellie had uh, two for four in yesterday's game. Line drive. Beautiful play by Dale Maxville. As he literally dove through the air and caught that ball while his body was off the ground, then skidded on the ground, and also heads up base running by Mickey Mantle not to be caught off first base. Joe, you don't see many better than that. No, you don't, and I thought sure it'd be a double play, but once again, Mantle showing why he is such a great ball player, waited to see what was going to happen. That, that Maxville, I'd say he was suspended in midair. He definitely was. There is the fielding, uh, defensive fielding play of the game so far. All right, here's Pepitone. Joe lined a third, double to left. Swing and a miss to Pepitone. Strike one. It's a first and third situation if he gets through there with nobody out. Oh, definitely. Man, that ball was ticketed for the alley in right center field. Well, Boyer, Grote, and Maxville have made three real outstanding plays in this ball game. Next pitch, swing and a miss. Strike two to Pepitone. On deck, Tommy Tresh. Finely conditioned athletes. Their reflexes are simply great. Howard couldn't have hit that ball any harder on a low line drive. Gibson sets his pitch just outside. One ball, two strikes. There's one out. We're in the top of the six. Score tied 1-1. Second game of the 1964 World Series. Mantle leads away. Pitch is fouled back in the upper deck out of play. Pepitone comes back now to get a little of the pine tar and rosin on the uh, rag from Tommy Tresh. Gibson checks the sign from McCarver. He sets, delivers a curve. He checked his swing. Wait a minute. It hit him. It nicked Joe Pepitone. The curveball nicked Pepitone, and it must have nicked him on his uniform shirt. 
And Bill McKinley arguing with McCarver. And now Johnny Keene is coming out. And Bob Gibson is coming in from the pitcher's box. And here comes Dick Grote in from shortstop. And I think Grote wants to keep Gibson away from there so that Gibson will not be ejected from the ball game. That's what Grote's doing. Kind of an unusual play, Joe. That was a quick-breaking curveball. And uh, it looked like McKinley may have been asking first-base umpire uh, Ken Burkhardt, who is now walking in. Johnny Keene is out there. White is walking Gibson back to the mound more to uh, settle him down because you, one thing you don't want is a pitcher who is upset out there who may just fire one right down the middle. Now, White is over uh, talking to uh, Bob Gibson while Johnny Keene, Tim McCarver, and uh, Dick Grote continue the uh, discussion with the uh, plate umpire Bill McKinley. Well, from the way it looks, Joe, the Cardinals have lost that argument, but it was a very unusual play because, as Joe told you, the curve was quick and inside. Pepitone actually went halfway, started to swing, checked it, and Joe did not start for first base. That's what confused me. He turned around and evidently asked McKinley, did he hear him hear the ball hit his shirt? And McKinley said, take first base. Interesting, too, Phil, that out on the mound there's a big discussion. Hank Soar, who is the umpire at second base, has Boyer, Grote, Gibson, and White. He's uh, running that meeting while Johnny Keene and McKinley uh, running a meeting in home plate. Uh, meanwhile, back at the ranch, uh, yes. Pepitone's at first base. And at second base, uh, we have Mickey Mantle and one out. And Trash is just listening. The score is tied 1-1. And so we had a little excitement here. In the top of the sixth inning, Gibson is throwing a couple of pitches out on the mound. And that in itself is a little unusual, I believe. All right, Tommy Tresh steps in. Tommy has struck out and received an intentional walk. Mantle at second. Pepitone at first. There's only one out. And the Cardinals, of course, hoping that Gibson has calmed down a little bit. A pitcher who has lost his temper is not too much use out on that mound. He sits. Pitch to Tresh. Ground ball is short. Throw a base hit to center field as Grote dove for it. Mantle scores. Holding at second is Pepitone, and the Yankees lead 2-1. to one. So now you can see how important that call was. That was a hard ground ball. Dick Grote dove for it, couldn't get his glove on it. Mickey Mantle scores the second run of the ball game as Tommy Tresh drives in his fourth run of the World Series. He drove in three yesterday with a home run and a double. Pepitone held at second base. The batter, Cleet Boyer. Cleet bounced to second, hit a sacrifice fly to drive in a run in the fourth inning. Stretch by Gibson. Pitch to Boyer. A curve popped high in the air to short right field. Mike Shannon drifting under it. Pepitone goes back to tag, but he's just bluffed going, and Shannon's throw comes in at second base. The Yankees uh, saw Shannon fire that ball in from right field yesterday at second base, and they're not taking any chances. He gave him a pretty good commercial at that, didn't he? He sure did a line, a clothesline throw in a second. All right, that'll bring up Mel Stottlemyre. Stottlemyre's been up twice, struck out both times. And both times, Stottlemyre's been up with men in scoring position. In the third inning, with runners at second and third and two out. And in the fourth inning, with runners at first and second and two out. Gibson struck him out both times. Gibson has eight strikeouts in the ball game. Pepitone leads off second. Tresh off first. A ground ball to third. Ken Boyer has it. Runs over. Steps on the bag for the unassisted putout. The score at the middle of the sixth inning is the Yankees two, the Cardinals one. Say this is Joe Garagiola. You ever notice how in some sports a youngster will make headlines for a while and then poof? Sometimes when work comes in the door, interest goes right out the window. In business, too. Like the flash in a pan, who's great on selling, but short on service. And that's why it pays to do business with a Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Here's a guy who knows it takes work to keep a customer happy. So, he works. From the time you pick up the keys to your new car, until the time you trade it for another, your Chrysler Plymouth dealer cares. He calls it customer care. Service that treats you like a guest. And he treats your car as well as he treats you. Mopar Chrysler Parts, Smart Mechanics, a real car health plan. See your Chrysler Plymouth dealer, a man who keeps on caring. 
And right now, your Chrysler Plymouth dealer offers a free World Series spin a fact wheel. 60 years of World Series facts and figures, batting averages, pitching records, plus highlights of every series from 1903 to 1963. Be an instant baseball expert. Just ask your Chrysler Plymouth dealer for it. Okay, Joe, we just get official word now from the uh, press box that Joe Pepitone was hit just off the right thigh and actually ticked the pants and uh, was caught by Tim McCarver. And uh, the Cardinal fans are still getting on Bill McKinley a little bit. But nevertheless, the Yankees lead 2-1 to one as we go into the bottom of the seventh inning. And the Cardinals will have Lou Brock, Bill White, and Ken Boyer facing Mel Stottlemyre. Brock has twice hit back to the box. One a soft tap and one a vicious one hopper that Stottlemyre blocked and then picked up and threw him out. Lou has a single and a double in this series. Has driven in two runs and scored a run. Stottlemyre's first pitch foul back strike one. Almost got the ball boy sitting to the left of home plate. Boyer in a third base. Yankee outfield straight away on left-hand hitting Lou Brock. Short wind-up by Stottlemyre. His curve is in there. Strike two called. And Mel Stottlemyre has been mixing his pitches up beautifully. Taking a little extra time. Now he's set. Here's the two-strike delivery. A curve fouled back, and Brock waited for the last possible moment to swing at that curveball. Just got a piece of it. <laughs> Again, Stottlemyre looks in for the sign from Howard. His pitch inside. One ball, two strikes. And now you can hear the fans yelling, it hit him, it hit him, as Brock moved back out of the way. And McKinney will be getting this for the rest of the ball game. Most of it is good-natured ribbing. Curve is a little bit low, and the count's even at two and two. Joe is telling you that Brock has tape on his left wrist and on one of his fingers. He's all uh, healed up from those injuries, but he was hitting so well that he kept it on. There's a drive deep to left, but foul. And you know how superstitious ball players are, Joe. Oh, I see. You know, it's, it's funny when you see it. That, uh, Dick Stewart, I guess, is in the oh, with that, yeah. uh, class by himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get the feeling uh, where they get used to it, and they don't want to take anything off. That's right. A 2-2 two -two count to Lou Brock. Nobody out and nobody on. Yankees leading two to one. And Stottlemyre took too much time that time, so Brock asked for time. Steps out of the box, gets a little dirt. Bill White is on deck. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Fouled, out of play, over the roof. By the way, the attendance today is exactly the same as yesterday, 30,805. That was the attendance two days in a row. Again, the 2-2 pitch, a curve. This one's outside, and it's a full count. So Stottlemyre, who was ahead of Brock, nothing and two, now run the string out to three and two. And this is a fellow the Yankees would not like to see on base. Stottlemyre set now for the payoff pitch to Brock. He kicks, delivers. Foul tip in and out of the glove of Howard and back to the screen. Show those foul tips for catchers. Uh, they're really rough. Oh, you're lucky when you catch a foul tip, Phil, because uh, you think that the hitter's going to miss every pitch, so you put the glove where you think the ball's going to be, and, of course, when he ticks it, it deflects the course, and it just happens to stick in your glove. You really can't practice the play. <laughs> Again, the pitch is... Oh, and he hits Stottlemyre with a line drive, picks it up, throws to first for the out. Now, that's three times that Brock has been thrown out from the pitcher to first. The first one, as we said, he hit a slow hopper. The second one, a hard one hopper, and this one, a line drive. And Elston Howard has now called for Yogi Berra and the Yankee trainer, Joe Soares. And they're going out to the mound. And 
I'm telling you, he couldn't get out of the way, Joe. Howard wants McKinley to go out there, too, Phil, to take a look at his hand. He may have gotten his uh, pitching hand into the way of that ball. Joe Stories is uh, working on it right now, along with manager Yogi Berra. Looks like they're giving him a ball to see if he, how it feels. Of course, a lot of numbness occurs when you get hit like that. And it might wear off a little later on, but uh, I imagine they'll let him try it and see how it is. But I tell you, those pitchers, they're only 60 feet, 6 inches, actually less than that when they follow through from that batter. Remember one of the great clubhouse meetings, how do you pitch to Ted Williams down the middle and hide behind the mound? <laughs> And they're letting Mel Stottlemyre throw a few pitches into the plate. He threw those two with very little effort. And it looks like he's all right. Yogi turns around now and comes back. Quite a story. Yogi Berra coming back home. And Joe Garagiola coming back home. Two boys from the hill here in St. Louis. Bill White looking for his first base hit in this World Series. Steps in. He hits a drive to left center field. Tommy Tresh to his left. Turns now. Is under it. Makes the catch. He got good wood on that one to the opposite field. White had previously struck out and bounced to first. And now it's two away. And the batter, Ken Boyer. Boyer bounced to short and fly deep to center field. A ball hit well over 400 feet to the deepest part of the park here at Bush Stadium. The Yankees leading 2-1. to one. In the bottom of the sixth inning. Kenny Boyer takes a curve low and away, ball one. Boyer had a sacrifice fly to drive in a run, a walk and a single. He also scored a run. He was one for three in the first game. 0 for two here today. Stadelmeyer's curve on the outside corner. Strike called one and one. The fly ball hit to Tommy Tresh, by the way, was only the second fly ball hit off Stottlemyre in the ball game. Curve low, two balls and a strike. Mickey Mantle is giving Ken Boyer a lot of room down the right field line. The 2 1 delivery, a curve way outside, ball three, three and one. On deck, Dick Grote. Stottlemyre getting set on the mound. His 3-1 pitch, strike call. Boy, I had started towards first base, had taken two quick steps. And Bill McKinley put up that right arm and hollered strike two, so it's a full count, three and two. And now let's see what Stottlemyre will give him on a three-two count. He curved him and he swings and misses strike three. Second time that Stottlemyre has used the curve on a three-two count. And at the end of the sixth inning, the score is the Yankees two and the Cardinals one. Right now we pause 30 seconds for station identification. Mind if I talk now with the gas station men who display the bright yellow Anco windshield wiper service cabinet? Your customers will really appreciate a reminder about their streaking wiper blades. Let them look at a new pair of Anderson's Anco blades or refills while your gas pump is filling their tank. Tell them you can put them on in seconds. This is real Anco service, the kind that makes your customers happier and your job more secure. Listen to Bill Mace's post-game wrap-up on WNBC AM and FM, New York. In the top of the seventh inning, it'll be the top of the batting order for the Yankees to face Bob Gibson. Phil Inns, Bobby Richardson, and Roger Maris. The St. Louis Cardinals scored in the third inning of this ball game when Mike Shannon singled, Dal Maxville singled, Bob Gibson sacrificed them along, and Kurt Flood bounced to the shortstop. The Yankees came back with a run in the fourth inning on a double by Howard, a double by Pepitone. A walk to Tresh and a sacrifice fly by Boyer and then scored the go-ahead run in the sixth inning. Here's Linz. Walked, single, bounced to short, takes a strike. Phil got his first base hit of the series here in the third inning. He was 0 for 4 in yesterday's game. Gibson's pitch low and away, 1-1. Cool 
overcast day here in St. Louis. The curve is laying to left field, a base hit for Linz. A high curve ball. Lou Brock is up with it. Linz, who likes to make that big turn, goes around and then comes back. What was that report on Stottlemyre? Uh, hit him on the uh, right wrist, uh, Phil. So it uh, hit him a pretty good shot at that. And as you say, I guess it did numb it for a while, but he's lucky it didn't hit him on the hand where it might have uh, hurt one of the fingers. Here's Bobby Richardson. Struck out, double to left, popped to short. Bobby uh, squares around a bunt. It was a pitch out, and it's outside, ball one. Phil, did you have a favorite count you like to hit and run on? I know it's a catcher. I always thought the favorite one for hit and run guys was the second pitch for some reason. No, I never... I used to like that first pitch a lot, Joe, because they didn't uh, like to waste pitch outs on me, so I figured it'd be over. The pitch, Bobby squares around the ball, gets away from a carver, bounces back to the wall, lends around second, he's going to go to third. And he goes all the way to third base, and let's see what they call that. That ball bounced. A wild pitch charged to Bob Gibson, and McCarver could not locate it immediately. He was looking all around. Phil, that's the toughest play in the world for a catcher because, for one thing, that ball hits off your shin guard. You don't know which way it's gone. Everybody in the ballpark, both clubs see where it is, and you can't have any idea where it's gone, and you have to get help from somebody, and you could hear Boyer scream, you could hear Gibson scream, and finally McCarver caught it, and with a guy like Linz on, he picks up that extra base. Yes, sir, it was heads up base running by Phil Linz. He's at third now with two balls, no strikes on Richardson. A foul coming back near the screen, and McCarver throws the mask away, cannot reach it. Two balls, one strike. Linz loves to run, and he had gotten a second quickly, rounded it, and then when he saw McCarver just siding the ball and going back for it, he took right off the third. There was no chance for McCarver to get Linz. The Cardinal infield is pulled in for a possible play at the plate. The Yankees lead 2-1, to one, and uh, the Cardinals cannot afford to give up any more runs. Play the infield back. The wind-up by Gibson. His pitch, broken bat, fly ball to center, a base hit. And that barrel of that bat has just gone out to shortstop as Kenny Boy is picking it up. A base hit for Richardson. Man, you talk about an instant toothpick factory. <laughs> there was a bat in his hand and a bat by shortstop. The bat almost went as far as the ball. That's absolutely right. And, of course, with the drawn-in infield, neither Grote nor Maxville had a chance to get that little looping fly that went into short center field. So the Yankees take the lead... Three to one, and here's Roger Maris. Maris struck out, bounced a short, fly to left. Richardson leads at first. The pitch to Maris, low and away, ball one. Still nobody out here in the top of the seventh. Stretch by Gibson. His curve is over, strike called one and one. On deck, Mickey Mantle. Humphreys and Richardson loosening up in the bullpen for the St. Louis Cardinals. Gibson's pitch, a ground ball to the right side and through a base hit as it bounced over Bill White's head in the right field. Richardson goes to third and Maris holds on at first base. And I tell you, this hard infield, there was a ball that Bill White thought he was going to get. It took a high hop and went way over his head in the right field. Three consecutive singles. Mixed around a wild pitch. The Yankees have a run in. They have runners at first and third. There's nobody out. Joe, the scoreboard's got two runs up for this inning. I only got one. What do you got? I got one. One run, yeah. The scoreboard has got uh, two runs up there. But there are runners at first and third. Richardson at third. Maris at first. Here's Mickey Mantle. Mickey has struck out twice and walked. He has scored once in the ball game. And the infield is in. The pitch is over. Strike call. Oh, the scoreboard has just changed it. They put one run up. And I'd hate to be on that infield right now with Mantle at bat, and they're playing in to try and cut a run off at the plate. Maris leads off first. Richardson off third. The pitch is outside. The count is even at one and one. So I keep telling everybody that catching is the safest position in the world. You're behind those guys in these situations. Yeah, but, Joe, you get a lot of foul tips. You come home black and blue many a night. 
Pitch is low, and Gibson almost fell off the mound that time, putting a little extra on his fastball. Two and one. They call them the tools of ignorance, Joe, but that's, I think it's the quickest way to get to the big leagues, be a catcher. And you can stay there longer. <laughs> and when you finish, you can go to broadcast. <laughs> the pitch to Mickey is a curve over. Beautiful change-up curve by Bob Gibson. Evens the count at two and two. Elson Howard on deck. Gibson really in a jam. Runners at first and third. Nobody out and one run in already. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Ground ball to second base. Maxville knocks it down. Can't handle it. Picks it up. Throws to first in time. They get mantled, but a run scores. And moving to second is Roger Maris. So Mickey Mantle gets credit for a run batted in as Richardson scores. It was a tough play for Maxville because it took the short hop and he was backing up on the ball. He knocked it down with his glove but had no chance for Richardson at the plate. Here's Elson Howard. Struck out. Doubled to left and scored and then was robbed of a base hit on a great play by Maxville. Haley one for three. One man out. Yankees leading four to one. The pitch is hit foul down the right field line back into the crowd. Kelly was two for four in yesterday's ball game. Enfield back in normal depth now. The stretch and the pitch swing and a miss as he crowded him with a fastball. Nothing in two. On deck, Joe Pepitone. Maris leads away. The pitch, curve low. Nice play by Macaba. Maris had a pretty good jump that time. I think he had ideas. One ball, two strikes on Elston Howard. Gibson checks Maris. Foul back over the roof and out of play. As deep as that Boyer has to play because of the pull hitter and uh, power hitter that Howard is, uh, Maris can really get a good jump. And Boyer is deep at third base, that's for sure. And, of course, Howard, who can hit to all fields, neither the shortstop nor the second baseman can uh, shade over towards second and leave a big opening. All right, here's the stretch. Pitch is low, and it's a full count. Check that. It's a 2-2 count. Two balls, two strikes on Elson Howard. Pitch, ground ball is short. Nice play by Grote. He fires the first for the out. Moving over to third, Roger Maris. And here is Pepitone. Pepitone line to third. Double to left, and the crowd getting on him because Joe was involved in that disputed play in the sixth inning with Mantle at first and an inside curveball nicked Pepitone just about skinned him off the thigh and he was given first base and the Yankees picked up a big run all right two out pitch to Pepitone a swing and a miss strike one <laughs> on deck Tommy Tresh Gibson's pitched, and Pepitone tries to drag a butt and misses. Strike two. And Joe really had a running jump on that one. He's got Maxwell way back. Of course, with two outs, Dell can't uh, play short. If anything, he's going to give a couple steps the other way. That's right. I think if Pepitone would have bunted, that would have been a line drive to right field. <laughs> Probably <laughs> off the screen. <laughs> All right. The two-strike pitch, high and away. One ball, two strikes. Yankees have had eight base hits in this ball game. Cardinals have had three. Gibson's pitch foul off the end of the bat. Count holes at one ball and two strikes. Roger Maris at third base. This would have been a tough infield for you to bunt on, wouldn't it, as fast oh, as Oh, that's it is. too fast, Joe. Too fast. I like that high grass, sloping foul lines, and slow third baseman. 
Sound like an architect rather than a hitter. <laughs> Gibson's pitch is low, and the count's even at two and two. Fans are having a ball with Bill McKinley, and especially when Pepitone gets up there. Gibson ready for the 2-2 pitch. Drive to uh, right center field. Kurt Flood digging deep to his left on the warning track. Makes the catch just in front of the wall. And what a jump he got. And now at the middle of the seventh inning, the score is the Yankees four, the Cardinals one. Swing, 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 swing. Nineteen sixty five Plymouth Belvedere, a new way to swing without going out on a limb. Sixty five Belvedere, beauty, power, big car at a little price, eighteen models in all. Sixty five Plymouth Belvedere, a new way to swing. swing, swing, swing. with all the roaring 65s at your Plymouth dealers. For the Cardinals in the bottom of the seventh inning as the partisan crowd here at Bush Stadium stands up for the lucky seventh inning stretch. Dick Grote, Tim McCarver, and Mike Shannon to face Mel Stottlemyre. Grote has bounced to third and walked. The Yankees are leading four to one. Roger Craig is loosening up in the bullpen as Grote takes a strike. Jerry Buczek, a utility infielder, is loosening up in the bullpen too. Grote hits a ground foul outside of third. Nothing into the count on the Cardinals shortstop. Grote has had one base hit in this World Series. Single his first time at bat in the first game yesterday. Stottlemyre's two-strike pitcher curve line at the shortstop building. One away, a line drive, but right at Linz. That'll bring up McCarver. Tim has twice bounced to the shortstop. 0 for 2. He was 2 for 3 yesterday, a double and a triple. A left-hand batter. One out, nobody on. Stottlemyre's pitch is right in there. Strike one call. Can't find a more relaxed young man than Stottlemyre. Outwardly, anyway. There's a line drive to deep right center. Maris digging. And what a play he made. Holy cow. Joe, will you tell him about that play? He got a tremendous jump in the right center field, and I tell you, reaching one hand, and just reached out and made the play. If he is a left-handed thrower, I doubt if he makes it because he was just outstretched as far as he could go, and that was a tremendous play by Roger Maris. And I tell you what scared me, Joe. He was not too far from that wall when he was at full speed, but I see they've padded him since the last time I was in this ballpark. He still would have got a pretty good jolt if he'd have been a little bit closer. He really had to run for that when it was a cinch double, possible triple, or inside it's the park home run. Right. All right, here's Mike Shannon, single to left and scored and bounced to second base, a right-hand batter. Stottlemyre's curve is inside, ball one. First two men have lined out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Grote to the shortstop and McCarver to Maris in deep right center.
On deck, Dal Maxville. Stottlemyre's pitch ground ball is short. Lins to his right, comes up with it. Fires to first in time for the out. And now, at the end of the seventh inning, the score is the Yankees four, the Cardinals one. In 1965, Plymouth Valiant, the compact that hasn't forgotten why you buy a compact. The Roaring 65. <laughs> 65 Plymouth Valiant, 18 models, easy to handle, easy on gas, all wrapped up in a bright new package. 65 Plymouth Valiant. Best all-around compact. Now with all the roaring 65s at your Plymouth dealers. Something for everyone. The roaring 65. We get ready to go on the top of the eighth inning with the Yankees leading four to one. And Tommy Tresh will come on to lead off. Tommy has struck out, walked single to center, has driven in a run. Bob Gibson on the mound. Al Downing is up again in the Yankee bullpen. Here's the first pitch to Tresh. He takes a curve right in there. Strike one call. Downing relieved in yesterday's ball game, remember? And it looks like Yog will be going with Downing in the bullpen throughout the series. Tresh tries to bunt misses. Boy, he had a running jump on a curveball, which was a perfect pitch for Tresh to try a drag on coming into him, and he was breaking towards first base. Nothing in two. On deck, Cleet Boyer. Wind up by Gibson. His pitch, a ground ball to second base. Maxville backs up. He's got it. Fires to Bill White, and it's one away. Of course, uh, travel date in there, Phil. Uh, Downing uh, warming up reminded me of this. They've announced uh, Simmons and Boughton to open up in uh, Yankee Stadium. So Yogi utilizing that fine left uh, arm of Mr. Downing to uh, keep him in that bullpen. That's right. I forgot about the travel date, Joe. Off day tomorrow. All right, here's Cleet Boyer. He is bounced to second. Hit a sacrifice fly and fly to right. Takes a pitch low, ball one. On deck, Mel Stottlemyre. Gibson's curve, ground ball to Boyer at third, who throws Boyer out at first. So the brother act. Cleet Boyer bouncing out to his brother, Ken Boyer. And you know, both of them have said the same thing. I'd like to take a base hit away from him. They did? Yeah, I talked to him <laughs> separately, and Ken said, I'd like to just take one hit away from him, and Cleet said, I'd like to rob him of one. <laughs> that is unusual. You wonder what they're feeling. They've got to be mixed feelings. Here's Stottlemyre. Struck out twice, bounced to third. Takes a strike. Next pitch is low, one on one. Roger Craig has completed his warm-ups and uh, scheduled a lead off for the Cardinals. Rather bad second in the bottom of the eighth will be Gibson. Probably have a pinch hitter. There's a swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. On deck, Phil Lins. Two out, nobody on. Yankees four, Cardinals one in the top of the eighth inning. Gibson delivers, it's low. Counts even at two and two. Gibson's curve, swing and a miss, strike three. Third time he's got Stottlemyre. And at the middle of the eighth inning, the score is the Yankees four, the Cardinals one. Back. 1965 Plymouth Barracuda. Fast moving back back. Spectacular low price. Fast moving back back. 
1965 Plymouth Barracuda. The 65 Barracuda. Sleek, swift, seats five. Roaring 65. Barracuda. The back seat flips down for seven feet of carpeted cargo space. Big bang, bang. 65 Barracuda. Big bang, bang. Bucket seat standard equipment. Big bang, bang. Spectacular low price. Big bang, bang. Now at your Plymouth dealer. Ferrari. As we get ready to play here in the bottom of the eighth inning, Bob Skinner, a left-hand hitter, will come on to pinch hit for Dal Maxville. No, check that. Check that. Carl Warwick is batting for uh, Maxville, and Skinner is on deck to bat for Bob Gibson. Looking in the on-deck circle, never did look in the batter's box. Mel Stottlemyre ready. Delivers a line drive, a base hit for Warwick on the first pitch. And Warwick pinch hit yesterday and came up with a key base hit. A line shot to left field by Carl Warwick on the first pitch served up by Mel Stottlemyre. Warwick batting for Maxville. Here is Bob Skinner batting for Bob Gibson. Skinner, a left-hand batter. Pepitone playing in back of the runner at first. The pitch to Skinner. Hit down the left field line. And curving. Fair ball. Holy cow, that ball hit right on the foul line and bounced into the seats for a ground rule double. And there you are, Joe. That wind really helped the ball that time. And it's a good thing that the umpire was down on that foul line. Al Smith of the American League, the umpire... Right on top of that play, a fair ball. Now we're going to have a pinch runner for Skinner, Jerry Buchek, who stops to talk to Vern Benson. And once again, Johnny Keene has gone to his bench and his crowd's alive. So as Joe told you, they have those two umpires down the foul lines, and that would have been a tough one to call for the regular third base umpire. Hit right on the line. And as we told you, the wind is blowing from third base out towards right field. All right, the Cardinals have runners at second and third. Nobody out. They trail in the ball game four to one. Here's Kurt Flood. Struck out, bounced to short, and bounced to second base. A pinch hit single and a pinch hit double by Warwick and Skinner. The windup by Stottlemyre. His pitch is a curve. High ball one. Howard turns around. I have a little chat with McKinley. Ellie thought he had that pitch. And now Pete Mickelson gets up along with Al Downing in the bullpen. There's a strike on the outside corner. One on one. And now Bonnie Schultz, the knuckleball artist, and Richardson, the left-hander, are up in the Cardinal bullpen. Craig had been up earlier. Nobody out. Stottlemyre's pitch, a ground ball, a high hop, a boy, a leap side. He's got it. Throws to first. They get flood by a stride. A Baltimore chop that almost went over Boyer's head. Runners held at third and second. And here comes Lou Brock, who has made life dangerous for Mel Stottlemyre today. He has hit three balls right back to Stottlemyre. One almost knocking him out of the game, literally. A line drive that hit off the right wrist of Stottlemyre. Lou 0 for 3. Still only one out. Buchek at second. Warwick at third. Infield is back. Stottlemyre's pitch is high and away. Ball one. 
Lindsay shortstop uh, has moved over a couple steps towards the bag to try to protect the middle. As Phil has pointed out, the Brock is at three of them that way. Linz is protecting that middle as much as he can. All right, Joe, now we've got a one ball, no strike count on left-hand hitting Lou Brock. Stottlemyre's pitch. Foul on a line drive that almost hit Warwick. Warwick had a duck in a hurry at third base. Brock just went with that pitch and kind of slapped at it, but got the good wood on it. One and one, the count. Cardinal fans starting to whoop it up. Runners lead off second and third. The pitch foul back, strike two. Bill Wyatt is on deck. Meyer taking a little extra time. Now he's ready. His pitch a foul at the plate. Brock just got a piece of that one. One ball, two strikes, one out, two men on. Yankees four, Cardinals one. Brock steps back into the batter's box. Here's the windup. The pitch outside with the curve. Counts even at two and two. Stottlemyre goes to the rosin bag. By looking at him, you'd never know he was in a jam. Warwick leads off third. Buczek off second. A 2-2 pitch. Curve ground ball to Linz. He's up with it. Goes to first base. And time to get Brock a run scored. And as Garagiola told you, Linz had just moved over there near the bag and Brock hit it right at him. And RBI for Lou Brock. That makes it Yankees four. Cardinals two here in the bottom of the eighth. And the battle will be Bill White, who is looking for his first 1964 World Series base hit. White has struck out, bounced to first, fly to left. Buczek, who held it second, leads away. Stottlemyre pitching from a stretch position. Delivers, it's outside, ball one. Both the Cardinal runs have been scored the same way. On ground balls to fill in with runners at third base. And one out. Curve right in there. Strike call. One on one. How about this guy is dangerous, Joe? Oh, he's a real tough hitter. Uh, he can hit all over. You can see they maybe shade him just a step uh, towards right center field in the outfield, but in left field, Tresh is pretty much straight away. He was the guy who led him in a stretch run, a tough hitter up there, but the thing that impresses me more than anything, Phil, is that uh, Stottlemyre, the way he seems to think, well, it's just another game. That's right. You're absolutely right. Cool, calm, and collected. One on one on Bill White. Two out. The stretch. Pitch curve a little bit low. Two balls and a strike. Adelmeyer has been keeping that ball down, keeping the Cardinals up to this point from hitting those long fly balls. <laughs> now he's ready. His pitch gets off Howard's glove, rolls away, and going to third is Buczek. Let's see what they call that. Waiting for the official scorer to give a decision. A pass ball charged to Elston Howard. Now, in yesterday's ball game, Ellie was charged with two pass balls. I talked to him about it before the game. He was having any problems seeing. He says, no. He said, I saw the ball good. He said, I said, look, unusual to me. He said, he only had three all year. 
That's right. That's hard to believe. All right, it's a 3-1 count with a runner at third. The pitch is high, ball four. And... That's only the second walk given up by Mel Stottlemyre. And it brings to the plate Kenny Boyer, who led both leagues in RBIs for the year. Boyer has bounced a short, fly to center, and struck out. Bill White at first, Jerry Buchek at third. Two out, and the Yankees leading 4-2 to two in the bottom of the eighth. Stottlemyre stretches. Pitch to Boyer, a curve swing and a miss, strike one. Mike Quella, a left-hander, is loosening up now in the Cardinal bullpen. Boy, Johnny Keene had everybody out there this inning loosening up. Howard runs out to the mound now to talk with Stottlemyre. Well, Bill White, who uh, just had a base on balls, reached first base for the first time in this series. 0 for 4 yesterday and uh, 0 for 3 today. One strike on Kenny Boyer. Stottlemyre's pitch, curve low, one on one. Yogi has a great deal of confidence in this young right-hander, and now Yogi gets up and moving Boya back at third base, wanting him to play a little deeper. Here's the stretch. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. He actually foul-tipped it, how it held it, as Bill McKinley gives us a sign now, rubbing one hand against the other. But... Stottlemyre kept that ball down low, just about around the knees. <laughs> One ball, two strikes, two out. One run in. A stretch. The curve is just a little bit low, man. I was pretty close to be taken in a spot like this, but that boy has got a good eye. Two balls, two strikes, two out, and two on. Stottlemyre leans over, gets the sign, runners lead away at first and third. His curve fouled just off the end of the bat. He just got a piece of that to keep alive. He has stayed away from the sinker ball with Boyer. He has relied heavily on that curveball, just one right after another, and he's been able to keep it in a real good spot. The perfect spot, of course, on the outside corner, and he hasn't missed when he has missed. You're right, Joe, because even if he does pull it, he can't get his full power into it and hit it out of the park if he keeps it out there. Scott Elmire ready. Delivers a curve, ground ball is short. Lynch comes in. He's up with it, throws to Richardson for the force play. And now, at the end of the eighth inning, the score is the Yankees four, the Cardinals two. Roaring 65, Roaring 65, Roaring 65, Roaring 65. Something exciting, something inviting, something for everyone, the Roaring 65. Plymouth Roaring 65s, big plush Plymouth Fury, swinging Belvedere, compact Valiant, fastback Barracuda, four new kinds of Plymouth, 60 models in all. Roaring 65, Roaring 65. Plymouth Fury, Plymouth Belvedere, Plymouth Valiant, Plymouth Barracuda, the Roaring 65s, now at your Plymouth dealers. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Don't blame your gas station service man who forgot to ask you, do your wipers streak your windshield? Chances are you too forgot and didn't ask him. Don't wait until your dead blades in the next storm cloud your vision. Get new Anco blades or refills. Get them the next time you buy gas. You're better off always with ANCO by Anderson. WNBC AM and FM, New York. Bonnie Schultz has come on to do the pitching, the knuckleball specialist, and Jerry Buchek has moved in to play second base for St. Louis. 
as we get ready to go in the top of the ninth and the top of the Yankee batting order. Phil Linz, Richardson, and Marison. Maris will face Bonnie Schultz. Linz is two for three, a walk, two singles, bounce to short. Knuckleball is low, ball one. I think this Linz has been a spark for the Yankees in this ballgame today, uh, Phil. He certainly has, Joe. Been on base three times, and he started that rally in the seventh inning when the Yankees picked up the two runs that have them ahead in the ballgame. Schultz's next pitch almost hits Linz. He goes down in a hurry. That was a fastball. Of course, you got to look for the knuckleball when you're facing Schultz, and uh, once in a while he might be able to sneak it by with that fastball. <laughs> Ken Boyer playing even with the bag at third. Pitch to Linz, knuckleball outside, and it's 3 and nothing. Bob Gibson worked the first eight innings. Gave up eight hits and four runs. Struck out nine men. Three-nothing pitch. Right down the middle. Strike one call. He aimed that one. The windup. Fast ball right in there, strike two. Linz had uh, taken a start to first base. Had to come on back. Full count. And, of course, Linz, you know, Joe, was a little instrumental in the Yankees' surge with that harmonica incident. <laughs> yeah, he had his own little concert, didn't he? He did, and he shook things up a little bit. The curve is line foul. Out of play. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes, nobody out, and nobody on. Schultz goes into the windup. Foul outside of third base. Kenny Boyer going down the line. And Brock coming on. And Ohm one near collision as the ball dropped between Brock, Boyer, and Grote. And Boyer and Brock almost collided going at full speed. There will be no error on the play. It was in foul territory way down near the bullpen. Still three and two on Linz. And now Richardson and Craig are up in the uh, St. Louis Cardinal bullpen. The payoff pitch to Linz. Foul back to the screen. Still three and two. Notice Schultz doesn't throw his knuckleball too often on a uh, full count. He has thrown a couple of curveballs and one fastball. Looks in for the sign. Pitch is popped foul. Kenny Boyer near the dugout, and he can't get it. As a matter of fact, Boyer went too close to the dugout. He was searching for the railing in front of the dugout to let him know just how close he was to it and then realized he was too far and the ball dropped back about two feet beyond the reach of his glove on the playing field in foul territory. There'll be no error. So you look at the flag in center field and she's blowing towards right field, switching off a little bit, but the ones on the roof of the third base side really blowing out towards right field. They are. It was a tough play for Boyer because they have that green... Uh, steel fence just in front of the dugout. We keep going. This game may be decided by barometric pressure. <laughs> That's the kind of day it's been. Cloudy and overcast. Bill Linz, who's been fouling off Bonnie Schultz's pitches. 3-2 count on him. Here's the windup. Kicks delivers a ground foul outside of third. Crisetti jumps out of the way. Crow usually feels those. 
Notice how quiet this crowd is, just waiting for that bottom half when they can hope for an explosion here. Yeah, they do have a few Cardinal fans here today, Joe. <laughs> Still three and two on Lenz. He's been up there a long time leading off here in the top of the ninth. Bonnie Schultz ready. His pitch is hit high in the air to left field. Lou Brock going back, way back. That ball is out of here. A home run for Phil Lenz to left field. So Phil Lins, who picked up that heavy bat today, sure came through with it. Two singles, a leadoff home run here in the top of the ninth inning, and the Yankees now lead 5-2. to two. Baseballs really carry here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Missouri. And here's Bobby Richardson. Bobby is two for four. Struck out, double single, popped to short. It's a line drive to short. Grote is right there. He's got it. One away. Brings up Roger Maris. Roger is one for four in the ball game. Is struck out, bounced to short. Fly to left and single to right. Yankees now with nine base hits to go with their five runs. Cardinals five hits, two runs. Swing and a, rit and a miss by Maris. Strike one. On deck, Mickey Mantle. Another knuckler outside, one on one. Been a couple of weird plays in this ball game. The one one delivery, a ground ball, and through to center field, a base hit. I tell you, those grounders pick up speed and have overspin on them as they go through with the outfield. Maris gets a second base hit. And it brings up Mickey Mantle. Now Johnny Keene is coming out. And Joe looks like he's going to bring in somebody. He's made a motion with his left arm. Uh, Gordon Richardson, a uh, young left-hander, is coming out of the uh, bullpen. He'll replace uh, Barney Schultz. Is this the first year for Richardson, uh, Joe? He came up, uh, in fact, uh, he was more of a relief pitcher than anything else, uh, Phil. He's not what you'd call an overpowering type pitcher. He has good control. He's another one of these guys who you'd have to put in that category of being a fearless pitcher. He's not afraid to throw strikes. Uh, got more uh, control of his breaking stuff than he has his fastball. Well, Bonnie Schultz, who I guess has been hit more by the Yankees than he's been by any National League team since he's uh, joined the Cardinals, pitches just one-third of an inning, allowing two hits and one run, the home run by Phil Lins, and Schultz leaves, but he has done a tremendous job for the Cardinals. A big assist getting them into this 1964 pennant. And it's been a real exciting year for both clubs. Yeah, you look at that uh, line score on uh, Phil Lins with the three base hits and that spark in the seventh inning. Uh, he, uh, of course, off and on all year with the uh, Yankees. Uh, Tony Kubek, the regular shortstop. Tony is out of the series because of an injury. Uh, young Mike Hegan took his place on the roster, but Lins, uh, I guess, is really filling in for Kubek. Yes, definitely, Joe, and uh, he has done a fine job. And, of course, he's the kind of guy you like to have around in a ball club. He's real pepper pot, and as you know from that harmonica incident he's always getting himself in trouble but he keeps the team on their toes you know they don't mind trouble as long as you get across home plate often enough <laughs> that's right the great late babe ruth was a great example of that so gordon richardson will be loosening up and mickey mantle who uh, was standing on the right side of home plate now swings over to the left side of home plate and will be batting right-handed and what an advantage of being a switch hitter Never see that curveball break away from you. It's always breaking into you. All right, Mickey steps up looking for his first base hit today. Mick has struck out twice, walked, scored a run, and bounced to second. Roger Maris at first base. Bill White holding him on. There's one man out in the top of the ninth. The Yankees leading 5-2. to two. Stretch by Richardson. Pitch to Mantle, a curve line. Fair ball hit the foul line going down the left field corner. Maris around second. Digging for third, and Crisetti's waving him in. Here's the relay. Groat's throw to the plate will not be in time, and Maris scores on a double by Mickey Mantle, deep in the left field corner. And the Yankees now lead 6-2. to two. Mick wasted no time as Gordon Richardson threw him a curveball, and Mick drilled it 
over the bag, hit the foul line, and kicked way down in the left field corner before Lou Brock could come up with it. Maris scored all the way from first base. Brings up Elston Howard. Elliott struck out, double to left, line to second, and bounced to short. They're going to walk Howard intentionally and pitch to Joe Pepitone. Pepitone, a left-hand batter. And Johnny Keene going with the percentages. There's ball three to Howard. Dick Grote cuts in back of the pitcher on uh, the return throw by the catcher. And there's ball four. Howard gets an intentional pass. Mantle is at second. Howard is at first. There's one out. Two runs are in. And the batter, Joe Pepitone. Joe lined a third. A great play by Kenny Boyer. Took a base hit away from him. Double to left. Then he was hit by a pitch ball on the controversial play in the sixth inning that Joe Garagiola will tell you about after the game. And fly to center field. Howard leads off first. Mantle off second. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Mickey had an idea that time. Had a pretty good lead and almost got a running jump. Just did hold up. Howard's got to keep an eye on Mantle. If he sees him taking off, he's got to go. Stretch by Richardson. And look at the runner. His pitch, ground foul outside of first pass. Jimmy Gleason down the right field line. Nothing in two on Joe Pepitone. On deck, Tommy Tresh. Been a real cool, cloudy day here in St. Louis. Richardson gets the sign from McCarver. Looks back at Mantle. Kicks, delivers, low and outside. One ball, two strikes. Yankees now with 11 base hits. Both teams had 12 hits yesterday. Pitch to Pepitone, low and away, and the count is even to two and two. Cardinals will have Dick Grote, Tim McCarver, and Mike Shannon coming up in the bottom of the ninth, looking ahead. There's a drive to right field in the corner. That's going to be in for a base hit off the screen. Mantle comes on to score. Howard moves to third and holding at first on a long line single, Joe Pepitone. And the Yankees now lead 7-2. to two. Pepitone really belted that one. A line single never got off about 10 feet from the ground and hit that screen. Shannon played it very well, holding Pepitone to a single. Brings up Tommy Tresh. Tommy has struck out, walk single to center and bounced to second. Three runs in for the Yankees here in the top of the ninth. Howard at third, Pepitone at first. Richardson delivers. It's a curve inside. Ball one. On deck, Cleet Boyer. Still only one out here in the ninth inning. Hector Lopez running down to the Yankee bullpen now. Time is called momentarily. The ball had gotten away in the Cardinal bullpen. Roger Craig running in to pick it up. Richardson ready. His curve is hit down the left field line, but curving foul back into the crowd. Yankees had two hits in the third, two in the fourth, one in the sixth, three in the seventh, and four here in the ninth. Hector Lopez starts to loosen up in the, the Yankee bullpen. He'll probably go in for Mickey Mantle in the bottom of the ninth inning. 
The pitch to Trish hit high in the air to right center field. Shannon over. Tagging up is Elson Howard. Shannon makes the catch. His throw to the plate. Man, he threw it all the way in on a fly. It was not in time to get Howard, but what an arm that kid has got. From deep right center in a home plate on a fly. Howard did score. It's a sacrifice fly, but on the play, Pepitone moved to second. A run batted in for Tommy Tresh. That's his fifth run batted in of this series. Had three yesterday, two today. The batter, Cleet Boyer. Cleet has bounced to second. Hit a sacrifice fly to center. Fly to right, bounce to third. And they're going to put Boyer on intentionally. And load him up for Mel Stottlemyre. And Stottlemyre will be the ninth Yankee to come to bat here in the ninth inning. Joe, sure, that's one of the rough things about batting eighth, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, I've always said, Phil, that it's really the toughest uh, spot in the lineup because uh, if there is a chance to get a run, uh, you get intentionally walked, and uh, they don't give you that real good ball to hit. you got to widen your strike zone to drive in a run. Kurt Flood has come in uh, to get glasses. The sun has come out brightly here, and uh, while he comes in, uh, Roger Craig makes a move out of the bullpen as Johnny Keene has come out. Uh, Keene wants the right hand of the pitch to Stottlemyre. we got all kinds of activity with really nothing happening. Uh, Brock is coming in for... Uh, uh, glasses. Uh, Stottlemyre has gone back to the bench. There's a meeting on the mound, and Craig is the new relief pitcher. Base is loaded. The Yankees have scored four runs here. There's an off day tomorrow, and then uh, it opens up in Yankee Stadium with Simmons and Boughton. And right now, we pause 30 seconds for our station identification. Listen to Bill Mazur's post-game wrap-up on WNBC, AM and FM, New York. When 130,000 better gas stations display the familiar bright yellow Anco windshield wiper service cabinet. Please remember, the man at the gas pump can replace or refill your streaking blades in seconds. The fresh new exclusive Anco cushionite rubber gives you clear, restful vision that gets you there sooner, safer. You're better off Roger always with Anco. By well, Anderson. Down in the Yankee bullpen, Hector Lopez is warming up along with uh, Ralph Terry. As Phil mentioned, uh, Lopez will probably go in as a replacement for Mantle. Joe, the unusual thing about this Cardinal uh, lineup, only three men have had uh, previous World Series experience. Craig is one of them on the mound with the Brooklyn Dodgers and Dick Grote and Bob Skinner. It's a young ball club, too, Phil, when you really yeah, get down to it. When you look ahead to the future years the Cardinals have with this club, things look pretty good. All right, the batter is Mel Stottlemyre, who has struck out three times and bounced to third base. Pepitone at second, Boyer at first. There's a curve, strike one called. Stottlemyre started a swing and evidently went far enough around. The Yankees leading 8-2 to two in the top of the ninth. Craig's curve, swing and a miss, strike two. Brad Joel asked me what kind of a hitter Stottlemyre was before the game. I said he got 5-for-5 five five in the last game he played, but that was against American <laughs> League pitching, Joe. The stretch and the curve is strike three called. Four runs for the Yankees, and at the middle of the ninth inning, the score is the Yankees 8, the Cardinals 2. This is Joe Garagiola. Say, you ever notice how in some sports a youngster will make the headlines for a while and then poof? Sometimes when work comes in the door, interest goes right out the window. In business, too, like the flash in the pan who's great on selling but short on service. And that's why it pays to do business with a Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Here's a guy who knows it takes work to keep a customer happy. So he works. From the time you pick up the keys to your new car until the time you trade it in for another, your Chrysler Plymouth dealer cares. He calls it customer care. Service that treats you like a guest. And he treats your car as well as he treats you. Mopar Chrysler parts, smart mechanics, a real car health plan. See your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. A man who keeps on caring. And right now, your Chrysler Plymouth dealer offers a free World Series spin a fact wheel. 60 years of World Series facts and figures, batting averages, pitching records, plus highlights of every series, from 1903 to 1963. Be an instant baseball expert. Just ask your Chrysler Plymouth dealer for it. 
Okay, Joe, and uh, Hector Lopez has gone in to play right field for the Yankees in place of Mickey Mantle. And as we get ready to play in the bottom of the ninth, Dick Grote will lead off. Grote bounced the third, walked, and lined to the shortstop. The Yankees, eight, and the Cardinals, two. The Cardinals won the first game. Day off tomorrow, and the series open Saturday. The pitch to Grote, low and outside, ball one. And now the sun is breaking through. One of the few times, and it's bathing the field in sunlight. There's a fastball in there. Strike called one on one. Stottlemyre's one one delivery. Line down the right field line. Lopez digging over. Can't get it. It goes by him. That'll be extra bases. Grote is digging for second. He's around second, digging for third. The throw to third will not be nearly in time, and Grote is in with a triple. I tell you, that Dick Grote looks like he catches the ball and throws it out to right field. The only other right field hitter I've seen near as good as Dick Grote is Luke Appling of the uh, Chicago White Sox. You know, the great thing about him, too, Phil, he can handle the ball inside the right field. If he wants to go to right field, it doesn't make any difference where the ball is. Man, that is hard to do. All right, here's Tim McCarver, twice bounced to short and once robbed of at least a double on a great play by Roger Maris in the seventh inning. Stottlemyre's pitch is a base hit up the middle. Grote comes on to score, and that makes it an 8-3 to three ball game. Tim McCarver lining a single up the middle. And Yogi Berra is coming out of the Yankee dugout. And as Gradiola told you, Downing and Terry, a left-hander and a right-hander, are warming up in the Yankee bullpen. That's a long inning for uh, Stottlemyre uh, when the uh, Yankees scored uh, four runs. And uh, it could be that he may have said something to the manager about watching me. And uh, if I get in trouble, make a move. And managers appreciate that. Uh, I know the good pitchers have always done it. Oh, well. they do. Whitey Ford is great like that, as you know, Joe. He'll tell you first, second, that he gets tired and he feels he doesn't have it. Of course, it works in the reverse, too. A lot of pitchers don't want to tell you. And then they hurt themselves and the club. But right now, Mel Stottlemyre and the Yankees leading here 8-3 to three in the bottom of the ninth. There's no one out. McCarver at first and Mike Shannon the batter. Shannon is single to left. Bounce to second and bounce to short. The stretch. Pitch to Shannon. Ground ball is short. Lynch to his right. Has a Richardson a one. Back to first. Double play and a beauty. And I want to tell you, you had to see that one. Linz had to go far to his right, skidded to a stop, threw off balance to Richardson, and Bobby's return throw doubled up Shannon. So two quick outs. And let's see uh, who is the batter. Charlie James is coming up to bat. Right-hand hitter takes a curve on the outside corner. Strike one call. Two out. Nobody on. Curve, strike two. He swung far enough around. He held up, but the bat had gone by the plate. Two strikes, two out. No one on. Yankees eight. Cardinals three in the bottom of the ninth inning. Stottlemyre kicks, delivers a curve that's inside. One ball, two strikes. Young right-hander gets the sign from Howard. Curve swing and a miss. Strike three. That's it. The Yankees win it. Eight to three. The final score of the game, the Yankees eight. And the Cardinals three. And in just a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. And right now, let's turn it over to Joe Garagiola. Thank you very much, Phil. Well, the whole story, as far as the Yankee victory, was the simple combination of all baseball games that you win. Good hitting and good pitching. Mel Stottlemyre, the whole story here. 
as he really set the Cardinals down. He had a real good sinker ball. He started out Bob Gibson, the losing pitcher, struck out eight men in the first four innings. And it was a pitcher's battle until the Yankees got a big break. A wild pitch figured in on the big break for the New York Yankees. And it was a hit batsman in that sixth inning that uh, figured in on a big break. But then they broke loose with a four runs in the ninth inning. So the Yankees win this ballgame 8-3, to three, but the whole story has to be Stottlemyre. Mel Stottlemyre, who evens it up. And this is a kid they brought up, and you heard Phil Rizzuto talking about it all during the ballgame, uh, about his poise and how cool and how collected he could be. And he showed that because the only time he really got in serious trouble was in the eighth inning when Johnny Keane went to the Cardinal bench and Carl Warwick got his second pinch hit. That was a single. And then Skinner doubled down the left field line. And it was second and third and nobody out. Flood bounced out. Brock bounced out a run scoring. White walked and then the ever dangerous Ken Boyer was up there. And he got him on a force play and that was it. The line score, eight runs, 12 hits, no errors for the Yankees. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for the St. Louis Cardinals. The winner was Stottlemyre. The loser was Bob Gibson. So the World Series now stands one apiece. The Cardinals won the first game 9-5. to five. The Yankees win the second game here this afternoon 8-3. to three. Now there's an off day, a travel date, and then on Saturday in Yankee Stadium, once again, we will continue. And the starting pitchers announced by both managers will be Kurt Simmons for the St. Louis Cardinals and Jim Bouton for the New York Yankees. Our producer today has been Ken McGregor. Our engineer, Howard Gunther. Now, this broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. Now be sure to tune in Saturday at 12.45 Eastern Daylight Time for the third game of this exciting 1964 World Series when your host, as today, again will be Gillette, the people who know men best, and Chrysler Corporation, maker of Plymouth Dodge Dodge Trucks Chrysler and Imperial. This has been an NBC Radio Network production. This is a direct appeal to more than 130,000 leading gas stations that proudly display the familiar bright yellow Anco windshield wiper service cabinet. And it may interest you too. Highway authorities now are convinced that about seven out of ten cars in America have dead wiper blades that can't stop streaking. Streaking dims vision, causes eye strain, forces abnormal traffic slowdown. Authorities claim that you, at the gas pump, can do most to correct this serious drag on storm traffic. So please help relieve much time-wasting, fender-bending traffic congestion. As each car comes up for gas, simply have ready the pair of fresh new Anco wiper blades or refills that the car needs for clear vision. Hand them to the driver with their box. Let him look at them while you service the car. Then tell the driver you can install them in mere seconds. Time-saving, nerve-resting Anco service brings car owners back for more, makes your boss happier, makes your job a better one. Listen to Bill Mazur's post-game now, the wrap-up on WNBC AM and FM, New York.